the Seminoles of Florida State onto the field in Tallahassee to take on the Demon Dickens of Wake Forest. Bobby Bowden in his 20th anniversary season is a perfect 4-0 and against the Demon Deeks, who today send out linebacker Tucker Grace, along with the great lineman Elton Indoma Ogar, number 60. Out to the center of the field for the toss of the coin. You see Florida State having won the toss. And of Florida State with uh, Stan Shiver, rather Clay Shiver, younger brother of Stan, the All-American center. And Todd Rebull, the linebacker, representing the Knowles, Florida State the first. The Demon Deeks will get the football first on what is turning out to be a gorgeous afternoon for college football. And it is obvious, Dave, that they need to make first downs. They need to sustain offensively and keep Danny Cannell and one of the top offensive units in the history of the college game on the sideline. You're absolutely right. I, I think if they can keep that side, that quarterback on the sidelines, then they have a chance to, to move the football a little bit because once they get into their offensive position, ball, they're scoring in something like 103 seconds every time they get the football. That's very, very quickly. Now, what it may do is it may wear down the seminal defense a little bit, but as far as Wake Forest, it will not allow them to ever get set offensively. The flaming spear is planted. In Doak Campbell Stadium, we'll have to see if Renegade, with Chief Osceola aboard, is not run into exhaustion <laughs> of this afternoon. Jim Caldwell's players are playing harder, says the Florida State staff, playing with more intensity than they have in any previous season under Coach Caldwell. This is, of course, his third year. The former longtime assistant to Joe Paterno at Happy Valley, trying to get a turn. And last week thought he had the Terrapins of Maryland on the ropes and did. Held the Terps to but nine points, yet come out, came out on the short end of a 9-6 to six setback. And for Coach Bobby Bowden there, he knows this today would be his 28th ACC win without a loss. Well, you know, you're so right, because when you go into a game like that, speaking of uh, Wake Forest, and you, you go down to the wire and you lose by three, that's an opportunity to win that football game. They had several opportunities last week to win, and that's what's so disappointing about that game. Coming into something like this, you need all the momentum that you can get against a team like Florida State. The series, as mentioned, last year, Florida State scored the first six times. It had the football and rolled to a one-sided 56 to 14 triumph. We await the opening kickoff. It appears Scott Bentley has misplaced his tee. And while the other 10 Seminoles await the place kicker, he's over on the sideline. Now he's found it. The equipment manager has found the tee. We can kick off. For Wake, deep to receive a Marlon Estes, the wide receiver number one, has been doing a great deal. Kickoff returning this year for Wake, as has Herman Lewis, a running back who will see a lot of action this afternoon. In twin tandem, to receive the kick from Bentley this afternoon. Appears that to Miles Savage now to the right of your screen. Is back there along with Estes. The football on the tee at the 35-yard line. Good to have you along today from wherever you join us, coast to coast across the United States. Welcome to very warm and breezy Tallahassee, Florida. Bentley's kick. I will come down to Estes, a yard deep into his own end zone, and he fails to reach the 15-yard line. Great special teams coverage. Lamont Green, number 40, led the surge, and we are underway. And offensively, Wake led by the three-sport standout, and Rusty LaRue, a part of the ACC champion Wake Forest basketball team. He plays baseball as well. And from Oak Ridge, North Carolina, the three-year senior arrives here with pinpoint accuracy, throwing the football close to 60% of his passes find their intended target. He's very accurate. He begins today with a single back set in John Lewis. And now Wake Forest unprepared offensively. Has to call timeout without running a snap. That does not bode well, does that, it? That does not look good. I mean, you've been in the locker room for the uh, the entire morning. You come out in pregame. You get warmed up. You're on the sidelines, and you're getting your final instructions. Kick off. You come out. Timeout. That's not good. Well, while he uh, confers with his offensive uh, coordinator, Jan Corliss, head coach Jim Caldwell, the game, gentlemen, is scheduled to be played on the 14th day of October. They got that part right, but they missed the 2 o'clock kickoff. <laughs> the skill positions today, Wanda Shaw is one of 14 Floridians 
playing today is from Plant City High School, Plant City, Florida, and one of six true freshmen in action today. Balu and Estes, William Clark, the tight end. And across the front line, Bob Loy will anchor it today. Elton Indomo Ogar, the tackle, is hobbled. He has a right calf problem. He's going to try and give it a go today and see how long that he can work against the likes of Renard Wilson and that talented Florida State defensive front wall. The first play of the day has been confirmed. We promise you that <laughs> with the <laughs> sideline. And we are underway in motion to Beatty Davis. The first snap of the day and rolling LaRue throws and it's incomplete. Dropped at the 18 yard line. Todd Rebull was there defensively along with Green and in and out of the hands of William Clark, the tight end, who was open, got his hands on the football and dropped it. Wilson, Spain, Wadsworth, Spires, we suspect this afternoon. And wearing number 90, no, not Derek Alexander. Jim Caldwell said, I thought number 90 left and went to play professionally. Well, Greg Spires took over Alexander's number 90, and he is here. Look at the linebackers and the uh, secondary for you in a minute. Mickey Andrews wants to play a lot of people in the secondary for this afternoon. The delayed handoff brings nothing but Garnet and Gold defensively up front. It's third down. Well, you know, you go shotgun on a second down play when you really haven't established anything on the ground yet. So that's, I don't know about that, that particular play. That's a little odd on second down. Third and very long. Howard Bush Rebull. Bush and Rebull back last week from injuries to play against the Hurricanes made all the difference in the world for Florida State. Now they've counted so much on this young man all season long and then when he went down they were able to keep things going but now that he's back they feel they're even going to be stronger defensively if you can imagine that. Trend receivers to the far side. A two backs one on a way. Fuleru on third and one. He rolls against the green. Just does manage to get it away and just does miss his intended target. Marlon Estes had some green grass around him, but he ran out of room. The pass thrown too far. Bolware was the closest person to him, or applying pressure rather, to row and it's three and out for Wake. Well, you know, when you start on the 10, you're already in a hole, and then you try to roll out twice. If you can get your tight end to catch one, you've got movement. And then in this particular situation, it was just a poor throw. D. Feaster. Awaiting the kick from Wake's Mike Strazeri. A lot of time, kicks it from his own goal line and does get it away. Hangs it up there. Feaster calls for it and makes the fair catch with a flag down along the line of scrimmage. The catch is made at the Florida State 48-yard line. The punt sailing and even 40 yards. Our referee today is Ronald Cherry. As he flips on the microphone, he'll tell us. What do we have? Offsides against Florida State. Wake has an option here. I'm the demon. All sides. On the defense. I don't want the penalty. I might decline that and let Florida State begin there. I don't know off your own goal line or close to it. You're going to get a better kick than this out of Strazeri. It's a very good kick based on where he is. Now the Seminoles are going to start it uh, just beyond midfield, but that's All not sides. bad. On the defense. Penalty is declined. That's what Perfect. I do. Absolutely. <laughs> And the way that they were rushing the kicker too, you might end up giving up a touchdown. Sure, you give it. You have any kind of breakdown. If, if they were to re-kick, I guarantee you the Seminoles come after it one more time, try and get the block, and pick up an easy touchdown. The top quarterback in the Atlantic Coast Conference, tall Danny Cannell, with 41 career touchdown passes. Third all-time at Florida State. We'll keep it on the ground, and guess who has the football? Dashing across midfield on the first snap Warwick today for Warwick Gunn. That looks to be a gain of, D'Angelo we'll call Solomon it five. D'Angelo Solomon came up to make the stop from the secondary. There is Danny Cannell with 1,157 career or passing yards this season here in 95 and better than 4,000 in his career. Play action, rolling, looking way down the boundary. He throws and coming back to make the catch. At the 15-yard line, first down Seminoles, Wayne Messam came back for the football in front of Solomon. A gain on the play of 34. Now Messam gets the start in place of E.G. Green for this afternoon. We will see Green. But when you look at Messam, he's such a big receiver at 6'4". Aaron Deli out there, too, in a four-receiver set. That's how they began, but that's not how they're lined up now with four wide receivers. Back to throw Cannell. Quick zip and drop by Messam. 
Messam, the junior, starts in place of E.G. Green. Uh, Andre Cooper uh, not opening today. The other flanker both losing their starting assignments due to a disciplinary action. But you have Delhi, Messam, and Riley today, along with the uh, young Damian Harrell in the four receiver set for Florida State. Florida State going with the no huddle. The challenge for our officiating crew is to get the ball spotted as quickly as possible. Well, that's right. Whenever you go with the no huddle, that offense wants the official to set it down as quickly as he can. The minute he sits it down, within five seconds, they want to snap, go for the big score, catch the defense off guard. Ron Duggins, the freshman, is to the bottom of your screen, number 80. In the slot, Delhi. The blitz is on. Florida State picks it up. Delhi makes the catch at the 12-yard line and is belted out of bounds right away. Again, it's the cornerback, D'Angelo Solomon, the sophomore, number three, very active for away. The offensive line anchored by the All-American team captain in Shiver. A returning unit, most of whom played on the national championship squad of two years ago. Third down and eight. Work it out. Deep drop now sets it out. Good time. Can make one miss. And he's inside the 10 down to the 8, if not 7-yard line. And here comes the field goal unit. So Wake Hell. Well, that's, that's, that's not bad for Wake Forest on this opening possession. Now, Florida comes out, Florida State comes out, tries to set up the screen to Dunn. If they can get Dunn the ball out in the flat because of his running ability, because of his good vision, they feel that that's just as good as a pass or a toss. Wake Forest does a good job of containing comes a 26-yard effort off the toe of Scott Bentley, who's been struggling. He's missed four of his last six field goal attempts. Needs one for his confidence, and he missed it. Hooked it again. He's in the depths of despair and in a slump. The chip shot is wide left. Still scoreless here on Prime. Earlier, Paul, you talked about emotion. Neither team has been able to move the football in the early going, although Florida State has the ball in Wake territory, and here comes Warwick Dunn. Dunn with a first down carry right out of the box. Close to the 30-yard line is number 28, Gallup, 16 yards, and he's off to a solid start today, hunting what would be his seventh consecutive 100-yard rushing performance against an Atlantic Coast Conference You take bowl. a look at Dunn. This is what he does so well. Takes it inside, takes it out. Great improvising. If the hole isn't there, he'll create something. Two carries, 20 yards. And uh, Cannell changes the play, and yet the Knowles jump. Did so from the tight end position on the far side, and that'll cost him five prior to the snap. It appeared to be Kamari Charlton, the tight end, who was a little Fifth bit early. Full start on the offense, still first down. Take it back out to the 35-yard line. The third penalty today against Bobby Bowden Seminoles. The second winningest active coach in college football, only Joe Paterno. One more games, one head coaches, then has Bobby Bowden, hoping that this will be for the Seminoles, their second national championship in the decade of the 90s. By action, Canell zipping it to the far sideline. Great grab up the ladder. That's the completion close to the first down marker for senior Philip Riley. And see, when you have a player like Warwick Dunn, you can go play action as much as you want. When he's blistering your defense up the middle for 5, 10, 15 yards, you've got to check to make sure he's not sweeping the corners or coming up the middle before you can come with some kind of pass rush. The fifth different receiver that is held on to a catch today from the quarterback and Cannell. Warwick Dunn will try the near side. He's close to the first down marker still. Looks to need about a yard, and it's third down. Rob Hyman, the defensive tackle, a sophomore, came all the way down the line of scrimmage. Mark Makovic, a linebacker, teamed on the tackle. The fans grumbling here a bit. They don't believe Dunn got a great spot. Well, give it some time. Third and needing a yard. They'll put Pooh Bear up front. See if Pooh hammers. It'll be Dunn. Pooh gives him a block. There's daylight. 15, 10, down to the five-yard line. First and goal, Seminole. And the play made by the springing block of Pooh Bear Williams, Major Griffey, the corner, carried him to the sideline to make the tackle. A lot of times, 
the guys up front, they just don't get the credit. Yeah, Warwick Dunn's a great, great runner, but look at the blocks by his offensive line. His big fullback, when you've got that interference in front of you, and then you have this tremendous runner behind you, it's an easy game. Cannell, in zone bound, throws incomplete. And he ended up on the seat of his pants, too. Dropped by Marquis Taylor. The linebacker, another Floridian out of Delray Beach. Watch number 52 come into your picture. You don't see this happen a lot. Again, we talked about that big, solid offensive line for FSU. They do a much better job of protecting Canal. Second and goal in a scoreless football game. Pooh Bear pushing the pile down to the three-yard line. So tough to bring down. Really, Pooh Bear, a bear. You have five, six white jerseys on him, and the pile still continues to... Roll on toward the goal line. You know, every team needs someone like him in third down, short yarded situations. The big, nasty fullback that you can just hand it to him, let him go up, up, the, uh, up the gut. Nothing special. Jesus Hernandez gives Florida State some extra blocking, but it doesn't work. Wake pushes him back. It's fourth and goal. You bring a 290 pound left tackle in there in Hernandez, 77, to try and give you some beef up front, and still you can't push the Demon Deeks back. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, this uh, this is surprising. I'll say that much. It's 4:03, 4:02 in the first, and we still have nothing on the board. Now they're going for it, trying to get a spark. Williams and Dunn shift into the eye. They need less than a yard. Who gets the football? Well, it's Cannell rolling, looking, throwing. It's caught for a touchdown. Touchdown, FSU. Melvin Pearsall, the tight end. With his first touchdown grab of the year, the first score of the afternoon, Florida State is on the board six to nothing. Interesting that they didn't keep it on the ground to put six that, up that in lights. You're absolutely right, but I think Bobby wanted to go with the short thing. I, I think he felt that if he can roll out Danny Canal, then he has an option of either running or throwing the football. The vision is a lot better. We have an injured player, an injured uh, Demon Deacon being attended to, down on the goal line. It's D'Angelo Solomon, the very active corner, the sophomore. And uh, he is being attended to by the awake staff. In this the secondary, which is so young, and D'Angelo, a sophomore, the, the fifth leading tackler and the top man in knocking down passes, this is uh, a performer Wake could ill afford to lose today. And you know, they're already thin as far as depth is concerned, really needing a lot of help yes. from from other players off the bench, as you mentioned. So if the, you lose one of your key players, and that doesn't help, especially against a wide open offensive attack like Florida State. But you know, it was interesting how Florida State gets down into this red zone, and Bobby says, look, I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Because with a 91 point percent scoring ratio, once they enter that 20 yard line or that red zone, I guess he feels that's money in the bank. And this time it paid off for him. Well, as he trots off, Scott Bentley. We'll be on to add the extra point to make it a seven to nothing game. Florida State. It took the Knowles a while to get going. And that's the first touchdown pass caught this year by a Florida State tight end. How's that for a number? Yeah. A rare play out of Bobby Bowden's trick book. And the extra point is no good. It hit the upright. Bentley's in a dreadful slump. Six to nothing Seminoles, though, in Tallahassee. Melvin Pearsall hauling in the scoring toss of less than a yard from Danny Cannell on fourth and goal. The first touchdown reception by an FSU tight end this year as the Knolls out in front. Let's go back to the sidelines. Here's Scott. Well, Paul, I guess uh, Scott Bentley is in the worst possible position for a kicker. He's having mental problems. I talked to his roommate uh, who rooms with him in Thomasville on their Friday night trips before the game. And Sean Liss says last night Scott Bentley was all business. They didn't scout around for movies to watch. They didn't talk about girls. They ate their pizza and went to bed. He was very serious coming into this game, but apparently the mental problems still plaguing him this afternoon. All right, Scott, from one Scott to another. Estes and Savage, one and two in your program. To return the kickoff from Bentley. Let's see how he tags this one. It's short. It'll be taken by Savage. He bobbles it, picks it up at the eight, stumbles across the ten, fails to reach the twelve, and back he goes. Swarming Garnet and Gold all over him. The door has been open early in this game for Wake Forest to make some noise. And the Demon Deacons haven't responded yet. No, they haven't. In fact, you've got to give your offense much better field position than this. I mean, they've started these drives 
on the 10, on the 8, on the 9. You just can't open up your offense. You can't take any chances because you're so close to that goal line. You've got to get better field position. And the only way you're going to do it at times is on kickoffs and on punts. Wake has been averaging about 16 points a game. Its running game, though, has been anemic. Less than, or just over 70 yards of contact. They haven't done much on the ground today. Here's Lillard throwing off the back of his heel, and it's incomplete. John Lewis in the flat, the workhorse junior tailback, nearly got splattered there, but he was open. Uh, Samari Roll, number two, came up. The last man who wear, number two. Deion Sanders here for the Hurricane game a week ago had that number retired mm -hmm. and at the end of the year Roll will have to find another jersey. To give it up. But you, but you notice LaRue has been rolling out to his left the Seminoles right. It's only a matter of time and they've probably already detected that. So now they just start rushing harder upfield to disrupt his flow. Trips to the top of your screen. On second and ten. Lewis remains along setback. They'll carry it here. A little bit of daylight. Turns that into a gain of six. Maybe seven. Todd Rebull. The bandit linebacker, number 48, the senior, along with Sam Coward. Number 56. On the stop. Coward runs so well. It can react so quickly from the linebacking core. A lot of folks will say your defensive front's given up a lot of yardage. But that really is impacted by the linebackers sure. who are behind him. You get a Coward back there, a Bush, and a Rebull, as mentioned, as they did a week ago. Miami or anyone else is going to be in a world of hurt. They do such a great job of filling those gaps. Third down, a makeable conversion here for LaRue. He uses that free receiver set and rolls at the top of your screen. Pumps, pulls it down, and he'll fail to pick up the first down. Pump wants to get away from Sam Coward, the linebacker, but then came a lot of help, and that included Greg Spires, the defensive end, and Vernon Crawford. The linebacker, Robert Hammond from the secondary, they all got to the football. Well, see, as long as your defensive ends, as long as they can maintain containment on the end, there's nowhere for LaRue to run to. He's going to roll out. That's his strong side running out to his left. But if you notice when Wake Forest went with the trips formation, they, they were able to spread out the seminal defense. That enabled them to be able to run a little bit inside. That may be something successful that they may want to take a look at. Strazeri to punt for the fourth time today. He needs a monster kick here to help the cause. Pretty good effort. Feaster will try and return it. The first team Deke misses, the second one slips him. Loose ball on the field at the 47 yard line. The ball came free. And apparently Feaster went back to hop on it. Well, the Noles come up with the uh, loose football, and that would have been a major gaffe at your own 47-yard line following another solid kick off the leg of Strazeri. Well, you can see the pressure coming. Nice pursuit by Wake Forest. There's the hit. And someone, he just loses the football. That's all. You try and pick up extra yardage. You're spinning. You're diving. It comes out. But Wake Forest at some point has to say, fellas, we're playing the number one team. They're not really doing much. Again, Paul, I think they have an opportunity to do something here this afternoon, but they have to believe that themselves. Four yards shy of midfield. Cano with one touchdown in the bank today. A short one tries to air it out here. Hunting Riley, and it's incomplete. No penalty marker down. Looking stride for stride was Major Griffey. Now, Griffey takes over for D'Angelo Solomon at that cornerback spot. Right away, Cannell is going to test the junior. Well, here's your battle right here for position. He's running with him stride for stride. Not intimidated at all by the mighty Seminoles. That's a nice play by Wake Forest. This is all about attitude and emotion. We talked about that so many times in this game. He had to stay with a defending NCAA hurdles champion, too, in Riley. A sweep near side. Rock Preston, who has the sideline. Here comes the Rock. Give me the Rock and watch me run. 15. Trying to get away and down to the 11-yard line. Brent Moore ahead finally got him for Wake. But it's a gallop on a play of 37 yards for the Rock. See, this is when you know you're in trouble because you take out your number one guy, Ward Dunn, and here comes Rock Preston. Just a basic toss to the outside. If you give him the corner, he's going to take it. He just outruns everybody. But now watch the vision, the cutback ability. Back inside, he's off to the races. Now, if he cuts back one more time, perhaps he scores, but he runs out a little bit of gas. But when you've got that one-two punch, you've got Preston, you've got Dunn, you've got Pooh Bear. You've got a lot of weapons, Paul. Terrence Subert, 
is uh, shaken up on the play. The free safety. He's being attended to by the Demon Deacon training staff in a six to nothing football game with less than 90 seconds remaining and missed the first quarter. He could be winded too. I thought that Rock Preston was suffering from loose cartilage in his knee. There was some question on how well he could run. Be curious to find out after this game if it affected him. He galloped pretty nicely there, didn't he? Had to it, hit it, the sideline yeah. and then tack back to the center of the field. I mean, once again, I mean, once he turned that corner, it was his. And if, if well, just one man to beat, and he saw that and was able to cut back inside, and I think that's where he got in a little bit of trouble. But initially, the way he turned the corner, Carlos looked fine to me. The seventh of nine children in the Preston household. But they had some great pickup games oh, in the backyard. Huh? Tell you, you talk about getting to the dinner table on time. Well, you're in trouble. Wake Forest <laughs> is in trouble. You see what they have done in terms of both the first down department moving the chains. They haven't done that once in the first quarter today. And Florida State, which quite obviously is not at the peak of emotion this afternoon, still has outgained them by a whopping margin. And, and when you look at the, the field position that the Deeks have had all afternoon, Paul, from the from the opening kickoff, it's been poor. I don't think they've had a, a, a start offensively beyond the 10. That's just tough to operate out of those kind of conditions, especially against a top-ranked defense. Florida State finds itself for Bobby Bowden, poised on the 11-yard line, we'll call it. Ron Dugan splits to the far side, that sprinter and Riley to the near side left. And the backs, well, it's The Rock, dot in the eye, Pooh Bears in front of him, and here comes Preston. Starts out to the outside right, misses one tackle, and down to the five-yard line. Ross Preston on the Brent carry. Moorhead, other stop for the corner. He makes a miss, both he and Dunn. And that slithering ability. You have him dead to rights, and he's gone. You've tackled nothing but air. And, and that's what I, I really admire about these guys. I mean, they follow the blockers very well at times. It's not on the outside. I'll just take it back inside. Gain of six. Again, the eye set. Driving toward what would be the second square is Pooh Bear. And Pooh Bear's pushed back. Cracked at the line of scrimmage. Big Robert Fatzinger. The 265-pound senior, number 84. Just stood him up. Well, you've got to give good credit to, to Wake Forest as far as the recognition is concerned because when you see I formation, traditionally you're thinking that the tailback is going to carry that ball. They come back and slip it to Poo, but they're able to counter. Batsinger coming off a great game against the Turks. They're on third down. The Rock for the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. He glides right, finds daylight, and then explodes into the end zone. You know, in situations like that where obviously it's going to be a run and you see that toss to press and you've got to get somebody to come up you need some force from the outside if you can get your strong safety or one of your linebackers to shoot that gap and at the same time you can't allow that left defensive end to get hooked see right there you've got to get people to the outside there's no one to the outside if your end gets hooked out there you don't have a shot Bentley who's missed an extra point and missed the field goal finally splits the upright a big hand for Scott. See his teammates come over too to encourage him. Much like golf, but kicking is so much between the ears. Well, maybe next week we'll have that pizza and beer and sit in the room and talk about ladies talk about or something. Girls. Yeah, yeah. Higher in college. No, don't try that again. <laughs> You're too serious, son. Have some fun. Preston's big <laughs> run, 37 yards. A couple of experts up here. Yeah, right. Is the one that set up. Uh, the Rock being able to dart into the end zone. And the Knolls favored by as many as six touchdowns over Jim Caldwell's troops from Winston-Salem have a two-touchdown advantage as the first quarter has uh, only 14 seconds remaining in it. What a sputtering start out of the shoot today for Florida State. Yet Wake has not been able to pull onto the football and has not earned a first down yet. Perhaps this time Rusty LaRue and the Demon Deacons and get something going. Well, it, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what happens if they can bring back a decent return. If they can do that, because this is about the third or fourth time that Florida State has actually been running these 40, 50 yard wind sprints down on these kickoffs. So some of their guys, they you start to get a little winded as well. So if they can take advantage on the kickoff, get the ball maybe to 30 to 40, and then see what your offense can do. Took the Knowles less than two minutes. Capitalize on that possession. 
Five plays, 53 yards. The Norns are in two, the end zone. Here comes Miles Savage to the 15, to the 20. Savage, 25. Well, there's a better return. Out to the 27, close to the 28. Return of 25 yards. There's signs of life. At least LaRue doesn't have to turn around and see the shadow of the goalpost <laughs> over his shoulder. Now you can do some other things. If you want to, to execute some reverses, perhaps some screens, maybe some draws, everything isn't so critical because of where your field position is. Strazeri, the punter, has forced Florida State to at least start near midfield. LaRue under the gun to make something happen offensively. In motion to beat Davis to the far side, LaRue swings it out of the backfield. Across the line of scrimmage and ahead two. 31, 32 yard line, Herman Lewis on the receiving end. Gain of four, five yards for the sophomore from Columbus, Georgia. And that's the end of the first quarter. So the Knowles, through 15 minutes of play, lead by two touchdowns today here on five. Prime Network welcoming you back to Dope Campbell Stadium. The start of the second quarter for the Demon Deacons, who trail by two touchdowns. I'm Paul Kennedy, a Dave Logan alongside, and Scott Atwell is going to need some sunscreen. It's supposed to rain today. He's on the sidelines reporting, and it's a beautiful day here. Very nice. Nice breeze, and temperatures relatively cool to a certain extent. Not cold, but cool. There's a nice breeze, and that's helping the players on the field. It's third down. Wake has exactly no first down so far. One yard rushing after the loss there. Ten yards through the air. Number 10 in the road. Guns and nobody's near the pass. Marlon Estes running a slant route in double coverage. And Bernard Wilson once again introduces himself to Rusty. So three and out is the tap dance at the moment of fashion for Wake. Well, the, the, the slant route is there if LaRue can get the ball down. Bernard Wilson with good pressure, but still he did a good job of staying in the pocket. But what's happening here, three and out, your defense is going to start to wear down pretty soon. I mean, you have to keep that offense on the sidelines of FSU. Strazeri has enjoyed the win behind him. How does he fare into the teeth of a pretty stiff freeze? Well, it's a fake. Wake fakes it. Can you imagine? And the up man is dropped at the 29-yard line. Let's give Florida State another touchdown. They snap it to an up man in Gardell Chavis, and he was immediately dropped. And Florida State just stuffed it. You know, that, that's... If, if a team has a history of making mistakes on their punt coverage, on their punt blocks, then there's something to that. But FSU has never really shown to be that kind of team. So for Jim Caldwell to come out and execute that in this area of the field is questionable. Yeah, the minus 29. From the gun, leading 13 to nothing. Number 13 fires it out in the flat. Done. He turns nothing into two. Just spinning away. Warwick Dunn, one of the great running backs yes, in Florida State history. Bobby Bowden selected a 20-year anniversary team. The great players that he's had in two decades. He was one of the running backs. And he's a junior, right? And he's a junior. <laughs> That's how good he is. Swings it up this way. Gunny, that is caught. Andre Cooper. Coop has the first down, 17-yard line. Did not start today, but still makes the grab. That's his 29th catch of the year, the top pass catcher for Bobby Bowden's ball club this season. And you talked about Dunn. He's such a fearless runner. That's what I like about him. You see him spinning. Oh, this time, a caught again. Pickup of seven, E.G. Green. The other wideout who did not open today and normally does. E.G. on the receiving end in front of D'Angelo Solomon. Good to see that Solomon is back to duty. Now you've got your big guns back in the game. You go back to your no huddle. You're going to start to see some wide open offense now. Done in the backfield. Canell sets it up, slips it over the middle, and that is caught. So many weapons by the freshman and Dugans. And Dugans has a first down. It's first and goal Seminoles as Solomon hopped on his back to make the stop. Canell already with, by our count, 16 completions in the first half. 
for the corner. Little fight route. Touchdown, FSU. Andre Cooper. Touchdown, FSU. So much for your fake punt. Three touchdowns for the Knowles today. It's a 19 to zip football game. Yeah, one of the things they like about Cooper, sure, he's got good hands, good speed, but it's the leaping ability. He goes 6'2", 194, but watch the way he gets up in the air. They make it look so easy. You talked about the weapons. They've got it all. How do you defend the team that coming into this game on the 38 touchdowns were equal on the ground as well as in the air? 19 apiece. It's a 20 to nothing game following the PAT. Good to have you along today here on Prime. Florida State leading by three touchdowns as we check in once again with Sunburnt Scott. Well, Paul, uh, folks at Tallahassee, remember John Henry Mills is an outstanding high school football player around these parts. He left to go to Wake Forest where he was an outstanding tight end. Now he's with the Houston Oilers who are enjoying an open date. What about that uh, fake punt out there? Would you have called that one? Well, I think I would have called it just because um, you have nothing to lose. I mean, the guy's playing real hard. Um, might as well go for it as part of the game, you know? You had a couple of chances to play this Florida State team. Is Who's going to finally upset them in the ACC? I, I, I think um, Florida State's going to pull it out again this year. Um, they look real strong. Uh, as far as any other team being dominant, I can't see any other team right now. But they, Florida State does look real good. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. You can do the play-by-play for us. <laughs> but um, I think Florida State's going to dominate this year. All right. Very good. John Henry Mills, Houston Oilers, thanks very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Scott, thanks a lot. Well, there's your kickoff return. As Miles Savage, great return here, busting it all the way out to the Florida State 46. Well, you get someone that's finally running with some authority, running without the fear, just trying to make something happen, does a good job of following the blockers, but then breaks it off, improvises, cuts to the outside where he's got some space to run. I don't know about John Henry. I mean, once he gets done with this game, uh, his opportunity to coach may be in jeopardy if he's agreeing with that <laughs> fake punt. <laughs> <laughs> that return of 50 was the longest this season by Wake and the longest against the Knoll. The longest Florida State has allowed. Drilling 20 to nothing. Lulu has it batted away and completely nearly caught it again. Knocked down by Connell Spain, it appeared. Bernard Wilson lost his helmet as well. You see, Paul, that's good coaching. When your guy's up front, sure, they're aggressive pass rushers, but... When they can't get there, they do the next best thing. They get up in the air, and that's what they're taught. That's what they work on and practice every day. Well-disciplined defensive line. Take a look once again. They're fighting at the line of scrimmage. I can't get there, but I can get up in the air and knock it down and make something happen. That was Julian Pittman, obviously, rather than Connell Spain, who knocked it down. First time today that Wake has been on the Florida State side of the football field, and here comes John Lewis. Look out, John Lewis. Ten, five. Touchdown, Demon Deacons. Touchdown, White Forest. 46 yards. Wow. Now, how greatly can you question the fake punt? <laughs> It'd be a one-touchdown game, for crying out loud. Jim, what are you doing? Hey, listen, now that's not your tailback. That's not a toss. That's not a pitch. That's your fullback up the middle. One back set. Look at the holes up front. Open up. You get a couple of missed tackles. Nobody wants to leave their feet. Nobody wants to commit. This big guy fooled them all the way. They just sneak it up the middle. Quick dive. He has scored six of his team's 13 touchdowns this year. As big John Lewis. Well, the extra point is missed, though. Bell Hollows pulls it left. And it's a 20 to 6 game. Our kickers are struggling today, aren't they? Yeah. Wonder what he thinks about uh, the night before the game. He ordered pizza, perhaps. <laughs> Got... There's John Lewis of the workhorse. He scored three touchdowns in Wake's lone win this year. Came at the expense of the midshipman of Navy. Watch this run as they seal off, and he runs right through. Oh, that's just the arms of coward. Absolutely great blocking. Good leg strength. Just keeps it pumping. Runs for daylight. Everybody out of position, actually, for FSU, they really got caught on that kind of play. They're so aggressive up front, they rush upfield, hit the gaps, never expected something like that. Really, you're talking about a three-yard gain at the most on a play like that. Some smiles now on that Wake Forest sideline. The Demon Deacons had scored three touchdowns in two years of play against Florida State. 
And here they have just the third score. It's a long run. The big kickoff return by Miles Savage of uh, better than 50 yards. And then John Lewis carries it nearly half the length of the football field to find the end zone. And I think that's what Jim Caldwell has been waiting for, Paul, all afternoon. If we can get decent field position, then we can start to open it up. And you can see that that's exactly what happened. Once they go beyond midfield, you can use your imagination just a little bit if you elect to. But when you're so close to the end zone, you are strapped. There's just not anything you can do. You have to play everything so close to the vest. Well, Jim has the Deeks on the board now. I guarantee you, in his inner heart, he's thinking, you know, it might have been better to have Strazeri. He's averaging about 40 yards a kick. <laughs> Who did Deeks? He has really done a good job for the Deeks this afternoon. He's really kept FSU at least at midfield with a lot of his kicks. Under pressure as well. So the place kicker for Wake Forest and Billy Hollows, a junior from New Bern, North Carolina, booted a pair of field goals last week. All the scoring that Wake mustered in that defensive slugfest against the Maryland Terrapins has the ball on the tee and is set to kick it away. Hits it high, and here will come the rock from the six-yard line. That's the 15. And he's back to the 20-yard line. From the 20, Cannell will return to duty for Florida State. The stop made by Damian Daniel, real headhunter for the Demon Deacons. And we need to pay tribute to the fact that with that second touchdown pass that Cannell threw today to Andre Cooper in the corner of the end zone, that gives him 43 in his Seminole career and ties him with the Heisman Trophy winning Charlie Ward for second place all time behind Gary Huff with 43 career touchdown Congratulations. strikes. Congratulations. Pretty big numbers. That's impressive. And the guy that uh, had 43, your predecessor, has a pretty nice bookend sitting on his shelf at the moment, doesn't he? New York Knicks. Sorry, John. Get some playing time, he hopes. Great oh, catch boy. at midfield coming back for the football. Philip Riley. Riley to midfield for FSU. He, he adjusts so well. We mentioned nice. the fact he has world-class speed. But he's more than a sprinter. He's a pass catcher or a true receiver. And D'Angelo Solomon never really put himself in position to, to play this one. He bit on the pump fake all the way, never looked back, was just running with the receiver, didn't have a chance. Cannell tacks 32 more yards onto his passing numbers and now the delay gift to Dunn. Dunn with some daylight, dives inside the 40, close to the first down again. This would be for FSU. It's 11th first down of the first half alone. Marquis Taylor, the linebacker, the sophomore from Delray Beach and Atlantic High School on the stop for the Demon Deacons. And that is, uh, it appears, a, uh, a first down. It is a first down. Is the injured Demon Deacon being attended to, helped off the field as Marquis Taylor who made the stop. I'm impressed with the way Don, the way he moves, the way he spins. Does such a good job of trying to avoid the contact. You've got some of those runners, they love that. But here's a guy that only goes 178 and says, I'm going to avoid being hit. Five carries, 51 yards. He gets the direct snap here. They snapped it right to him. There's eight more. You know, a tough runner physically, mentally, to go inside, to take the pounding, to go outside. Just a joy to watch. And, and a lot of times, Bobby says, hey, listen, he doesn't always follow the blockers, but we don't get on him because nine times out of ten, he's right. I mean, he goes his own way and makes something happen. So all a defensive coordinator needs to see is a direct snap now. We'll have to spend an hour and a half getting ready for that play. Quarterback never touched the football. Can I zip right open Wiley. Been there all day long. That's a first down catch. And he's driven back, but he holds on to it. And the 14th completion. I told you earlier, Cannell had 16. That was his 14th and 19 attempts today. He is right on the money. And on the majority of those catchers has been Philip Riley. Riley with his fourth snare this afternoon. Well, you can see the respect factor. Look how far back the Deacon defensive backs are. They don't want to give up anything cheap. They don't want to get burned. So your underneath patterns are there all day long. Cannell just drops back and just rifles it there. Danny has 157 sure. yards passing today. There's a pause in the action. FSU on top by two touchdowns today here on Prime. On a day made for college football with Dave Logan and Scott Atwell, I'm Paul Kennedy of the Knowles driving again, leading 20 to 6, hunting their 28th 
consecutive ACC victory. Canell zips, throws, touchdown. Damian Harrell into the end zone. Canell with his third touchdown toss of the afternoon. A 27-yard strike for the young junior and Harrell. Well, you talk about spreading around the wealth. I think you had mentioned that Canal has gone to eight different receivers this afternoon. Now he comes back on the heavy post to his receiver for 27 yards, not to mention that really he hasn't been roughed up at all as he's back in the pocket. A lot of time to throw the football. Credit the offensive line for that. And number eight, one of the eight different receivers has his third touchdown. Career strike number 44. And that leaves him but eight behind Gary Huff. The all-time leader with 52, and here's how it looks. Let's take a look. He's already in the shotgun, so he has plenty of time there. Right between two defenders, right on the money. Nice post-route run. I tell you, he doesn't get any better than that, and he knows it. He's got all the time in the world. He's a big kid at six foot four, so he can he can see in front of him. If you don't get someone in front of his face to impair the vision just a little bit, move him out of there, rattle him, shake him up, do something. He can stand back there forever and just pick you apart. What the kind of receivers he has, and he's really not even going to his back yet on the backfield. If he starts hitting these guys on the short flats and the swing passes, wow, what an afternoon! But we're getting close to the, to that time when we're going to start to see some of the regular, some of the uh, of the reserves, don't you think? Yeah, I would think so. As Florida State now standing five and zero entering this game, unbeaten in the ACC as mentioned, and wait narrowly falling to Maryland. How costly would that setback have been for the Turks? And North Carolina leading Georgia Tech this afternoon and a pivotal game for both ball clubs as they meet in ACC play. Scott Bentley having added the uh, extra point to make this a 27 to 6 affair. And there's Miles Savage. He ripped off that 50 yard return a moment ago. Florida State taking less than two minutes to score its longest possession today that resulted in points. The opening drive of eight plays took two and a half minutes. Since then, it's been a minute and 40, a minute and 22, a minute 41. Not a hurry up offense out of a shotgun. Here comes Savage. Savage out to the 25 and bounced around. So he has his confidence back. A little rattled at the outset, mm -hmm. running, as you mentioned, with some authority. Sure. I mean, sometimes you can run a little scared, Paul, in the sense that you just, you don't want to take the big shot. You're waiting for everything to develop. You have to play recklessly when you get on those special teams. Take it, hit the hole, knock somebody over, run for daylight. He's doing that. Eventually, they're going to have to get a kid like that in the lineup. Put him out there as a flanker, put him in the slot, get the ball in his hands. The ball in the hands of uh, Wake Forest at the moment. And on the snap, LaRue in the pocket. Throw, a short game. Big hit, too, applied to Tabidi Davis. James D'Amico, a walk on senior bandit linebacker. You mentioned the depth chart now will become more of a factor. Watch number 49 pass a lick. Well, they just come back in underneath. They try and fool him. They go trips to the left, try and get all the heavy concentration to that side and sneak it back underneath. That's not fooling the Seminoles, but still, he does a good job, Davis does, to hold on. Takes a pretty good pop. Kamiko began his college career at Liberty University, transferred here into the biggest of the big time, and kind of made a niche for himself. Found the place. LaRue with the short toss. He has it complete. He has daylight up to the 40 and shoved out of bounds. It's Herman Lewis. Marlon Green gave him the shove. Herman Lewis and John Lewis not related. Uh, the two running backs, but both will be used interchangeably. And here on the receiving end. Well, I like how Wake Forest does this. They twin receivers to the left. They use the blocking up front, set up just a nice little flare out to their back. That's a nice play because once you get those two big guys out to the left, your DBs are going to go out there. You're in man coverage. You try and set up a nice little swing pass. That's nice play. Just the second first down today for LaRue. Dumps it again. Here is Lewis. Lewis made one miss. A gain of four. The fifth completion for Rusty LaRue. Back-to-back -back receptions made by Herman Lewis. Darrell Bush, Samari Roll, teamed on the tackle for FSU. We'll see now because they couldn't get it upfield with the receivers. Now they're going to the backs. And Jim Caldwell said before the game, he says, listen, I've got to get the ball in Herman Lewis's hands because... 
this is a guy that makes something happen for our team. If they take away your deep passes, your intermediate passes, you start to go with the swing passes. If you can get it to your fullback, that should be a mismatch. Yeah, the experience and intelligence of Rusty LaRue to find that open receiver. Under pressure, he dumped this one incomplete. No receiver in the area. The tight end, William Clark, was about 10 yards away from the football. The Knolls were coming with a blitz. Robert Hammond was in the backfield, a strong safety. Mm, Got to find that hot receiver when those guys are coming. But I think what happens is he tries to roll out on the blitz. And the way he's rolling fools nobody because the Seminoles are blitzing and he has no one to throw to. Couldn't even find the outlet. Rusty's 5 for 13 today. Watch Hammond. Here he comes. He tries to fake the bootleg. Nobody bites on it. No one to throw to. And you look up, and there's the strong safety mm -hmm. two in your face. You got to get rid of the football. That's trouble. They were on the run. Those are the middle screen. Going nowhere. Julian Pittman, offensive tackle. There's Wadsworth, two at the bottom of the pile. That was thrown right into the interior of the line. And John Lewis. The running back was in there among 270-pound defensive linemen. But you know something, Paul? I, I, I like the movement from the Deacon Demons because although they didn't pick up the first down, they're doing other things except for trying to just sneak things up the middle, run the traditional toss. You can have a defense thinking, and that's what you want. You want some kind of confusion. Austin Crowder snaps and deeps. Brazeri has been averaging about 40 yards a kick. This one into the wind. Very short punt. And it'll be blown dead at the 24-yard line. So Florida State has to begin at the 24-yard line. Wake not faking it there. And a 27-6 football game with 8 minutes and 17 seconds remaining prior to halftime. Well, I think everyone probably envisioned FSU having at least 30, 40 points by now. But they started off slow. But they've done a very good job of, of really uh, recovering. You look at the total offense. On the season average, it's 606 today, 305. We still have a, a quarter to go in the second half, so they're on they're on pace. Certainly are. And Danny Cannell with a three touchdown afternoon. May have a record setting day for him. Cannell fires to one tackle up to the 30 to 35 yard line. First down, FSU. How painful is that for a that defense hurts. when you make somebody miss? And uh, it appeared to be Rick Gardner, the defensive end, that let him get away. Ball. One of the toughest things to do for anybody, any defender, is to break down in the secondary and make the tackle. He misses. And once he does that, Rock has all that open vision. He's got blockers in front of him. He can pick and choose which direction he wants to go in. You've got to stop him, nail him at the line of scrimmage. You would have a loss on your hands. Brave soul and Wake Forest colors today here in the heart of Seminole country. On first down. Sliding effort, that is a catch on a gain of three. Andre Cooper snared it before it hit the grass. Brent Moorhead was in the area. The pass was underthrown. Trying to throw it from the far boundary to the near sideline. A long way to throw it. That's tough across the grain if you can get it there, but uh, most certainly had the time to throw. The 18th completion of the first half for Cannell. Here comes the blitz. He beats the blitz. Finds the receiver, E.G. Green, and Green nearly got away, didn't he? In the Demon Deacon territory, down to the 46-yard line. Well, listen, if you want to blitz this team, then you're putting your DBs on a man-on-man -man situation. These guys have some of the best receiving receivers in all of college football. They're licking their chops when they see that one-on-one -on -one coverage back there. That's tough. Wow, if you blitz, you've got to get there against this team. All the weapons being displayed today by FSU. Canal masterfully firing, throwing Cooper, and he fell down trying to cut back to the boundary in front of Brent Moorhead. Cooper already has hauled in a touchdown pass today, and the Knolls hustling up to the line of scrimmage. They want to snap the football, typically within five seconds of the ball being whistled into play. Look how quickly the ball is snapped. That hurry up attack on the wall, Canal going in zone bound. He throws. Touchdown, FSU! Oh, I like it. E.G. Green, the fourth touchdown pass today, fired by Danny Cannell. Well, you want to talk about...
first of all, a well-conditioned, well-disciplined football team. After the big strike to Cooper, everybody gets back to the line of scrimmage. We're going to execute the no-huddle. One, two, three, four, five, snap the football, and Cooper runs the corner route for a touchdown. That's a well-coached football team. you got to give credit to those position coaches as well as Bobby Bowden. Number 19, E.G. Green, hauling in a 19-yard touchdown pass for the fourth today for Cannell. Bentley with the extra point. And this one is shaped up near halftime the way it, we thought it was going to be. 34 to 6 on prime. Danny Cannell with count of four touchdown passes in the first half alone. And with more, here's Scott Atwell. Well, Paul, Florida State fans are going to the movies today. Filming has begun on the motion picture Family Portrait. It's a coming-of-age story about a college football quarterback. And the reason they're filming in Tallahassee, the director is two-time Florida State Theater School graduate Randy Sir. And Doe Campbell Stadium's changed since you were here in the 70s. Yes, it's about twice as big and four times as full, actually. Tell me about the script Family Portrait. Uh, now, the school is supposed to be fictional, but it's going to look an awfully lot like Florida State. Well, it's going to be a North Florida University, and I think that's about as much as I'll say right now. And I suspect they're wearing guard and gold, because that's what all the fans are wearing. Filming will begin with a dialogue in the spring, and if schedules permit, Burt Reynolds might be among the main characters. Burt Reynolds is in the house today. Saw him with Vic Prinzi a little bit earlier. Darting and dashing, Marlon Estes brings it out of the end zone. Coach Tom Nugent, his troops starring in the 50s for FSU. The Nugent clan had a reunion here last night. Vic Prinzi tells me more than 50 former Seminoles turned out along with Burt Reynolds. And they're here at the football game today, and they have to love the way their alma mater is playing. And Danny Cannell, 21 of 26 through the air, for close to 300 yards, 261. Now, as though they need to draw up more strategy offensively, you can see FSU's offensive uh, line coach saying, fellas, this is what we need to do to get uh, 34 more points. Yeah, you got to get that pass blocking <laughs> down. Yeah. Well, what's going wrong up front? LaRue to the boundary, battered away, oh. knocked down. Robert Hammond broke on the football, the pass intended for Dan Ballou. That takes practice, practice, practice. Mickey Andrews, the secondary coach, drilling his players daily. And in fact, Tuesday, they drilled in a driving rainstorm on just this. Hey, listen, if you want to throw the out, you better get it there. You can't float it. Defensive backs, they love it. They love the out. Go ahead. They dare you to throw it. If you're going to get it there, you better get it there in a hurry. And if not, make sure that the defender can't catch it as well. If you do catch it, that's six points because there's no one in front of you. Hammond's been playing banged up. He has a sore knee. May have to have it scoped at season's end. LaRue with but six completions today, and down he goes a sack. Dropped again. When not sacked today, he's felt the heat. And Peter Boulware collects his seventh sack of the season, one of the top pass rushers in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And Boulware does a great job. LaRue comes out, and he goes play action. You'll see right there. That freezes him for a moment. But FSU, their defensive line, linebackers do a good job. They just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. They know their responsibility as defenders. So play action is not working in this sequence. Out of the gun now. Third and forever. 14. LaRue straight down the middle of the field and incomplete. Oh. Had a chance to complete that. Although Daryl Braswell, the wide receiver, was surrounded by garnet and gold jerseys, there was a sliver of daylight, and he was about a half a stride away from making the catch. Well, you can see the light for just a moment. LaRue has time to throw. He can feel the pressure, but steps up very well and rifles it just a little bit more, and you've got something happening in midfield. Here's my MVP today. For Wake, mm -hmm. Mike Strazeri, in terms of field position, he's done well. Just does get it away, and he was dropped. There's a flag. Wake may hold on to the football. Feaster makes the catch, the 40-yard line, as Strazeri was popped and upended. And our referee, Ronald Cherry, standing nearby, threw the yellow handkerchief. Roughing the kicker on the defense. That's 15 yards. Automatic first step. Well, they first didn't down's run. a first down, right? Yeah. And they didn't run into him either. <laughs> they, they did indeed rough it. That crunched pretty good. Oh, boy. But I tell you what, you look at FSU, and they're remaining aggressive, even though they have 34 points, a commanding lead. But when you go after that punter, you got to lay out for the football, not the leg. Got him. It's the second man that misses. 
and pick up 15 yards. Way to give up your body. Throw a little acting into it if you have to. He could be part of the movie. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Best performance by a, right there. by a punter. <laughs> <laughs> but he keeps his offensive line alive. So the ball now spotted shy of Wake's 40-yard line. They're trailing a bunch, 34-6. to six. Marching Chiefs coming up at halftime. You want to stick around for that? Down the field goes. LaRusso Murray Wall makes the catch. Now can he return it like Dion? The 25-30 at the INT. Yeah, this is very Dion-esque, isn't it? Dion Sanders all the way. Watch this number two dazzle him. And finally down to the 28. Dion, you'd have been proud of that. He would have been proud. Hey, if you're going to wear the jersey, wear it well, because you're not going to get it in another five games. You have to give it up. But boy, I tell you, you know, you have to come out at some point and establish the fact that we will go deep just to keep a secondary honest. And if you can get the throw down, he's got plenty of time. He's got a nice arm. Just overthrows the receiver. Now, now you'll see the fun start for FSU. Hey, somebody give me a block right there. Watch the speed. Watch the cutback moves. Zip. Oh, look at Roll rolling. That's nice to the outside. That's just a good piece of running. Every DB, you know, at one time in his career was a running back. A 51-yard return. Very Sanders S. Here's a guy that knows how to coach the football too. Warwick Dunn. And Wake is tired here in the waiting moments sure. of the half. A lot of arms out there. And Dunn's fresh. Kelvin Moses, the linebacker, a freshman, a big hitter. Number 49 in on the stop. Dunn today with his seventh carry. He gains eight. He has 65 yards in the bank today. And Danny Cannell, that's touchdown. Pooh Bear. Pushed back, a 20 yard line. They've been on Pooh Bear a bit in practice. They say he needs to improve his run blocking. He carried the ball 10 times against Miami, the most work he has seen in any one game with the football this year. But when Dennis Andrews went down, another senior fullback, they think the pressure somewhat was lifted from Pooh Bear to focus on his run blocking. So they've been on him to knock people down. He's done a pretty good job of it today. The catch is made by Diggins. Inside the 10, first and goal, Knowles. Now, you know, you were talking about Pooh Bear. Most of those big guys, they just love to run the football. It's prestigious to them. But when you're 6'1", 266, and let's just give him 270 to make it even. Guys like that, you're supposed to just plow people out of the way. A training, training table meal That's here, it. training right. table meal there. It can <laughs> fluctuate. Uh -huh. Eight separate receivers have held on to the football, four for scores. Pennell for the end zone for his fifth TD, and he's got it. Damian Harrell a second time. Five touchdowns off the arm of Danny Cannell. And once again, you, you've got to credit this offensive line. I mean, when you look at the time that Cannell has to just look off receivers, to, to do what he wants to do, to allow his receivers to finish running their routes and to run them properly, take a look at Danny. He knows where he's going all the way. Nice, strong throw. Did you see the gun there? Finds his receiver, runs a nice route out in the open. That's just excellent, excellent execution. Pitley executes the PAT as well, and the score swells to 41-6 Florida State. It's a career day today for Danny Cannell in terms of his touchdown numbers. And Florida State with 41 points on the board. We're not yet at halftime, and America's top-ranked team is having its way with Wake Forest. Neiman Deeks mm. stood tough for the first quarter, and then that fake punt, a little shaky there. And John Lewis with the big ramble, the lone score today for the Deeks. You look at the time for Canal, and Harold runs such a, a disciplined route right for the corner, leaves everybody in his tracks. That's just too easy. Again, Canal is such a big guy, 6'4". 215 has a good strong arm and when he gets protection like that he can just throw forever it's really starting to rack up the points now what we need to do is you need to keep an eye on that horse on that renegade we're going to find out what kind of condition he's in he's been he's been rolling all season long as well 77 points against duke and and the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> does he have a backup <laughs> get him a water up. bucket <laughs> send him to the trainer florida state the top scoring offense and all the country has 41 on the board here, averaging better than 50. It's had some huge 
scoring performances, including the 41 they posted a week ago against the Canes, 77 against NC State, 70 against Duke, 45 against Clemson. And I promise you they are not done yet. Miles Savage awaits the football from Bentley. Four yards into the end zone, a Savage. Well, down it, touch back. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line. Canal's best game as a quarterback was a five TD performance. He has five today. The FSU all-time record is six in a single game. And Canal might not have had the best week in the Canal family. Uh, his father is the Miami Dolphins team physician, and earlier this week, a pretty good day at the office, performed successful knee surgery on one Dan Marino. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a a family of achievers yeah, I makes you feel somewhat so. inferior. Doesn't it? <laughs> Where did I go wrong? <laughs> Son's an All-American quarterback uh -huh. down there, and his dad is a marvelous physician. And here, even in the press box, they aren't done with Danny Cannell. Offensive yeah. coordinator Mark Rick is saying, "Okay, let's work on this, that, and the other." Mm -hmm. It's a money family as well. I'm sure he'll do well next year oh, on somebody's team. You would know, having spent <laughs> close to a decade in the National Football League, what he can yes. bring to a franchise. Yes, I tell you, such a fine player. My goodness. Second down. And 10. Out of the eye. Here comes the other Lewis and Herman. Herman with daylight. 40. Midfield. And into Seminole territory down at the 47-yard line. Harold battles the strong safety, hopped on his back. Two big runs, one by John Lewis for a score, and now Herman Lewis here with a John of better than 30 yards himself. And special, just a nice off-tackle play. Wake Forest does a good job up front. Lewis does the rest, finds a seam, a gap, uses good speed. Nice blocking by the offensive lineman of Wake Forest. Florida State is into the depth chart just about across the board uh, this afternoon. That includes number 75, Billy Rhodes, at a defensive lineman position. Maru holds his way, now throws back to the other. Has his tight end, William Clark, but that didn't fool anybody. Henry Crockett, the linebacker, stayed at home, which is so important. That's Chad Alexander, who is on the receiving end. His father... Hubbard Alexander, an assistant coach with the Dallas Cowboys, used to be with the Miami Hurricanes for quite some time. You know, a lot of times you see linebackers and linemen that like to chase, and they see that quarterback roll out of the pocket, and they want to get a piece. Henry did a good job that time of staying home. Henry Crockett, nice play. Second and a dozen. Completion actually lost yardage. A real short drop over the middle. He pops it. That's a first down for Wake. Joe Zelenka of the tight end on the receiving end. And once again, LaRue has to pay the price. Mm -hmm. Now you watch Zelenka. He catches his football. I think a lot of times some of these big guys, these big tight ends, don't expect to get the football, and they just automatically think somebody's going to hit him. <laughs> For some reason, they just stumble and fall down. He had a lot of daylight in front of him. A big man like that used those shoulders and those, those hips and those forearms and keep rumbling. The Knowles with six substitutions. Defensively playing situational football here, and, and there's some confusion. Got him. Timeout taken by FSU. Two, four, six, eight, ten. They were one shot. Timeout on the field. Appeared. Florida State. Second and Florida Charles State timeout. has to call timeout. Julian Pittman now comes out late from the sideline. We mentioned a half dozen people on, and sometimes you get the call wrong, or you aren't quite certain about which unit should be out there. Well, it's a smart play. You go ahead and you go with your timeout because one man makes all the difference in the world. If offensively you detect that and you see it, you can take advantage and you can get some points on the board. So for your defensive captain to go ahead and make the timeout, that's that's a smart play. Heads up play. Well, we have a moment. Congratulations are in order to Wayne Hogan, longtime assistant athletic director at Florida State, named yesterday the new director of athletics at Montana, a grizzly. Congratulations to Wayne and his wife Dawn. They're bound for big sky country. He spent, he grew up in this city and he spent 16 years in the athletic department and now gets the big mm, job at that's, Montana. That's something. He can definitely, he can throw away those polos and get that, <laughs> get those gloves and that scarf and uh, 
<laughs> that four-wheel drive out if he doesn't have one. Yeah, we, we will uh, <laughs> we will put the address up uh, if you'd like to send him a sweater or a jacket. <laughs> Pat Kennedy's going to work tonight. The head coach of the basketball Seminoles. He'll be Scott Atwell's guest at the half, as will Coach Bobby Bowden. Ladies and gentlemen, in the fourth quarter. Tonight, Midnight Madness in Tallahassee. It starts about 10 o'clock at the Leon County Civic Center. A huge crowd will turn out as Pat Kennedy, the most successful basketball coach in 25 years at FSU. will get him going. And Dave Odom, the three-time Atlantic Coast Conference Coach of the Year. Wake Forest, the defending co-champions of the ACC. They'll start tomorrow. Get this. Their first practice, 6 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Incomplete. And you see beginning basketball practice, 6 a.m. on Sunday. 6 a.m. on a Sunday. That'll get your An attention. Day. Won't it? That'll get your attention. They say what he a way to a, start the season. He does that for about a week. Yeah, just on to purpose. Adjust, just, just to adjust attitude. Just to aggravate you. That's all that is. <laughs> They'll be ready to go to church. <laughs> By the time you get to church, you get up for church this morning? Yes, I did. Of course, I'd been up about six hours before that practicing basketball. But best of luck to Dave Odom. Major success himself. Winston-Salem. John Lewis took a pretty good shot. Passed along the line of scrimmage as he toted it in there. Try and sneak the old dive play back up the, the middle again. That's the, the same identical play that Lewis scored on earlier in the game. And put the Six points on the point on the board for the Deacon Demons. That one didn't fool him that time. Getting to rain here in Tallahassee. We had showers earlier today. It was a beautiful day when it began. This is the time of year. You get rain on about a daily basis in the panhandle of Florida. Wake Forest will call timeout. We're a minute and 32 seconds away from halftime. And the Knolls dominating on a five touchdown afternoon for Danny Cannell, all prior to the half. Sit Melvin Pearsall, the tight end, the first time this season that a tight end has caught a scoring toss. Andre Cooper hauled in a 12-yard pass. E.G. Green from 19 yards out. Damian Harrell has scored not once, but twice. And that has to make Jeff Bowden, the man in the headset, and his dad, Bobby Bowden, very proud. Jeff's the wide receiver coach here at Florida State, the first son of Bobby Bowden and a coaching family that he's ever hired on a full-time basis on one of his coaching staffs, trying to avoid sure, nepotism. Can, you know, I can respect that. I mean, you, you go out there in the world, you, you make your mark. I can respect that. And so Bobby Bowden, his son Terry today, playing, of course, Auburn taking on Florida. The Seminoles posting now one of the great Conference winning streaks only Oklahoma and we'll give you the numbers because they aren't there. Oklahoma won 44 straight games. West Virginia won 30 and then Florida State 27. West Virginia's was in the Southern Conference. It came back in the 50s. Oklahoma's was posted from 52 to 59 as you see. So in the modern era truly the last four decades what Florida State is doing is unprecedented. Oh yes, I mean you talk about a team of the 90s and we're only halfway in there in the 90s but what they have done is just totally dominated the 90s in college football. I want to mention too that Jeff Bowden, we were talking about him a moment ago, was a two-year letterman here too. Sets up the screen and he finds John Lewis. John Lewis has a blocker in front of him and John Lewis is into the end zone. Touchdown a second time. Touchdown Wake Forest. A little screen work, and they got a springing block as well from Terrace Clark. The guard got downfield. And that's just as good as any play you can execute. You know that the Seminoles have a strong pass rush. They're now starting to blitz the corners. And so if you're going to give up those guys on the corners, you're going to lose the four defensive guys right there. That's six. All you have to do now is just beat the rest. And if you can get the convoy out in front of you, as John Lewis did, you can put some points on the board. Nice play by Jim Caldwell in the offense. A 35-yard gallop off the short screen from LaRue. The extra point this time is good. Wake Forest enjoys its second touchdown of the game. Mike, or rather Bill Hollows adding the PAT. And Jim Caldwell says, hang in there. We're almost to halftime, and it's 41-13 Garnet and Gold. And, and you have to you have to admire them to a certain degree, Paul, because 
a lot of times when you're getting games like this and you're getting waxed, I mean, you have a tendency to just say, this one's over, let's just uh, go ahead and pack it in. We'll come back, take a look again at the screen. Does a good job, first of all, of coming up with the ball. Now watch how he follows the blockers. Has his people out in front of him, and he's got good speed. Good speed for a man. Travis Clark did a great job on the kickoff block. That's what he needed to get in the end zone. So Lewis with a fine day himself against the top-ranked team in the entire nation in Florida State. It takes Wake seven plays to cover 80 yards. And the roughing the kicker call is a factor in sure. all of this as well. Gets back to our man Strazeri in the role he's yes. played today. The you know, for Wake. You take a look at John Lewis, and we, we've seen his ability to run up the middle, but nice soft hands. I really like that. There's your scoring drive. Seven plays, 80 yards. They take 228 off the clock. And the big one, 46 yards from LaRue to Lewis. That sets it up. And that light shower continues as Florida State has set the field of the kickoff. Deep for the Knowles, Jermaine Green. We will not feel it. He feels to will from the six. Here we go. To the 15 and the 20. Still on his feet. 25. Fighting forward to the 30, 31 yard line. That's how a young freshman displays toughness to a coaching staff. You know, you take advantage of every opportunity that you get. You're a young player. You're you're, you're fresh uh, fresh out of high school. They put you on special teams. Okay, son, here's your opportunity. Bring back a couple of kicks, and you show the ability not to go down. This is where you really make your bones as a young player on special teams. Cannell hunting the all-time FSU record for touchdowns in a single game. Instead, the Rock has the Rock snapped right at it. He gains one. Wake fields this one, defends it better than they did the first time. The ball was directly snapped to Warwick Dunn. Timeout taken by Florida State. Florida State That's stops the, the clock. Timeout in the half of Florida State. Thank you very much, Mr. Cherry. 62 <laughs> seconds to go prior to intermission. You know, a lot of times you, you look at the clock and you'll say, well, okay, fellas, there's only a minute and two left. Uh, nothing much is going to happen. But when you look at this lightning quick offense of the Seminoles, and remember coming into this game, they were striking at a pace of 103. That's how quick they were putting points on the board in a minute and three seconds. So they've got a minute and two. We've seen them off that pace a little bit. But still, they can strike in a hurry. So this isn't really a luxury for you if you're Wake Forest to say, well, they're just going to run the clock out. These high-powered, high-octane offensive like, offenses like Florida State, they don't just run the clock out. They go for it all with two seconds left on the board. Wind and rain right behind it. Moving into Dope Campbell Stadium. So as pretty as a day as it was in the uh, first quarter, Scott Adwell and Pat Kennedy may be a bit damp when we get down to them. They've been waiting a while on the sideline. Over the middle. It's caught by E.G. Green. And he's across midfield and down to the 46-yard line. Ball thrown right on his hip. And despite being surrounded by Demon Deacons, he snared the catch. Here's just a sophomore at 5'11", 185. He's going to get taller and heavier. He's already outstanding. Florida State, just as the chains are set down, is right back to business. Connell throws it incomplete. Intended for Rock Preston in the flat on the far side, and that stops the clock with 46 seconds remaining. You heard from our referee, Ronald Cherry, that the Knowles have burnt all three timeouts. Well, it just goes to show you what a little bit of pressure can do for the first time. I won't say the first time, but for one of the few times in this, this game in the first half, Canal is pressured, underthrows the football. Three receivers, a couple of running backs in the pattern. Danny looking deep. He fires. Cooper's there. First down grab, 27-yard line. These receivers run so fluidly. Yes. Yeah. Discipline, routes, and again, Wake Forest is only rushing three guys up front. So you're going with a three-man line, and so everybody's double-teamed initially, and you're just not getting the protection that you, or, or the pressure, excuse me, that you need to have. Well, that completion, the gain of 20, is Connell's 25th completed pass today. Now has 319 yards through the air, and here's Brock Preston. Brock Preston has felt it around pretty good and driven to the sideline. Delon Parrish, free safety, a freshman from Columbia, Maryland. 
hustle up to put the big hit on him. So many young kids. In fact, that uh, Wake has the fewest number of seniors of any team in the Atlantic Coast Conference this year. Playing a lot of youngsters. Canal fires this way, and Preston dropped it. Hit him right between the two and the four. Pretty good win now, blowing. Yeah, the win is coming strong, and, and I'm not going to say that had anything to do with it. That one is a definitely a catchable football, but it happens. But I noticed on the on the previous play, Bobby wanted to run a, uh, a, a quick delay. That's hard to do when you're only rushing three because you've got those nine guys playing behind you up front. Only the seventh in completion of the first half for Cadell. Cadell throws underneath. Warwick Gunn slipped into the game and made this catch. It's a gain of maybe four yards, and it comes with the clock set to expire. 15 and counting. 12, 11, 10. This is fourth down, so he can't spike the football. He's going to try and throw. He does, and it's batted up in the air and intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Tucker Grace, his second interception of the first half, and that'll kill the clock as well. He was hunting E.G. Green on the slanting route in the end zone. Couldn't get it to him. But as it stands, Cadell with five touchdown passes in our first two quarters. He and the Knowles carry a commanding 41-13 lead into the halftime dressing room. Coach Pat Kennedy had more in our halftime show just ahead. Prime welcoming you to Doak Campbell Stadium on what is now a rainy Saturday afternoon. Florida State raining down touchdowns on the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest and leading 41 to 13. We are at halftime. Uh, hello once again. We are also dry. We're in the press box. <laughs> Dave Logan alongside. Uh, I'm Paul Kennedy. I do believe that Florida State came out today flat. Wake had early opportunities, unable to capitalize, and then Danny Cannell got going. Well, that's too bad because they did have an excellent opportunity to put some points on the board. Speaking of Wake Forest, they had them where they wanted them. They were very flat, but then, as you mentioned, they got back on track and in a big way. And today, Danny Cannell in the first half firing five separate touchdown passes. The first came on fourth and goal at the one. And he found his tight end, Melvin Pearsall. Well, you talk about spreading the, the wealth. There it is on the rollout. Finds the big tight end. Usually not in the pitcher outside of a blocker. This time he gets into the action. We roll on to the second quarter. It was a 13 to nothing football game. And watch Cooper so fluid here in the corner of the end zone hauling it down. Well, they love him because of the leaping ability. We know he can catch. We know he can run. But he can get up in the air, Paul. Wake Forest had its moments, too. Big running back John Lewis popped one here. Gallup better than 40 yards for a score. Just a simple dive. Catches the Seminoles off guard. Uses good speed, good power. They miss a couple of tackles, the Seminoles do. Lewis does the rest. That touchdown run tightened the game a bit, made it a 20 the six affair, the extra point was missed, and our final score of a very busy first half of play found John Lewis on the receiving end of a screen pass from Rusty Delrue. Got a good block, sprung him free, and he raced down the sidelines into the end zone. Well, they take advantage of the blitzing Seminole defense. They they catch all their defensive linemen upfield. Lewis with the nice hands, follows his blocks very well, cuts out into the open, and again, for a big man, he's got good speed. Lewis with his second touchdown of the first half, the lone scoring today by the black and gold of Wake Forest, and in terms of the numbers, obviously dominated by Bobby Bowden's Knowles. No doubt about it. You take a look at the first downs, look at the Seminoles' rushing yardage. That's not even close, but there's the key, Paul. Passing yardage, 323 to 75 total yards, 460. They're on their way to that 606 mark. And this lightning shotgun, no huddle, hurry up, get it done attack. Look at the time of possession, a blink of an eye, and they're gone. You've got to look at the plays there. 8, 234, 5, 53, 140, 122, 141, 137, 123. That's no time at all for anyone to take a rest. Remarkable. Ray Lewis, the linebacker at Miami, called Florida State bionic. They're playing like that today. Once again, here's Scott Atwell. Paul, it'll be interesting to see what Bobby Bowden does with his reserves here in the second half. You know, he's come under some criticism this year for what some perceive as running up the score. And it reminds me of a story that Bowden tells when he was at West Virginia and facing a William and Mary team coached by Lou Holtz. Sure enough, his second and third teamers were throwing passes right to the end. And after the game, Holtz comes up to Bobby in midfield and says, what about this running up the score on me? To which Bobby replied, Lou, it's not my job to keep the score down. That's your job. Today is Jim Caldwell's job, and I don't think he's enjoying it. 
No, and, a, and in a rain covered field now, that could have an impact on this. Danny Cannell, two big numbers here. Danny Cannell has five touchdown passes. We are informed, and in fact, it was the legendary voice of the Knowles, Gene Deckerhoff, <laughs> stepping into the booth, your Sunday partner, <laughs> who pointed out that Peter Tom Willis, way back in 1989, threw six against the Tigers of the University of Memphis, then Memphis State. So six is the mark that Cannell is hunting. The other mark, Warwick Dunn, will remind you, has six straight games in which he has rushed for 100 or more yards. He currently has 64. Does Bowden allow him to reach 100? Wake will have a say in that as well. Here is Dee Feaster with daylight. He springs for it. He's across the 30 and out to the 31-yard line. And from that point, Cannell and company will go to work. Well, the rain chased some of the crowd out of Doak Campbell Stadium. We had better than 60,000 when this day began, but a torrential downpour. The marching Chiefs played right through it. The band played on. The show went on. A nice halftime show there. And we're ready for our second half. You know, it's funny because last week when Warwick Dunn had 184 yards and someone said, you know, you're only 16 close to 200. He mentioned the Bobby coach. I only need 1,600. For two and he says yeah but you had a fine day so he was out so interesting to see how he plays some of his regulars in the second half and bobby bowden wasn't about to let injury impact him warwick done right away look at this midfield 45 and down to the 44. maybe bowden put the put the onus on him the incentive is in warwick dunn's camp we're going to let you have an opportunity but you better make it quick sure now you talk about running up the score but these are simple plays this is just an ordinary toss it's in every offense nothing big i mean if you come out and you start going with flea flickers and reverses and halfback option passes and then you can say well maybe he's trying to run up the score but these are basic plays from a from a very good football team a gain of 25 on that snap now with 89 on the day he'll tote it again and uh, yes he will hit 100 right here so his 100 yard streak continues for warwick dunn and if Coach Bowden said, make it snappy, he did. Two snaps, That's and he right. goes over the 100-yard plateau. He, you know, once again, just a simple dive up the middle. Yes, he's got good blocking in front of him. You can see right here, Poobier with a nice block. That spring's done. He does the rest. Really, all Wake Forest has to do is get off the blocks and make some tackles, and it's a simple football game. But these are not any kind of outstanding football plays by the Seminoles. These are basic. A gain of 20 earns for Dunn. 109 yards today as Wake Forest Kenyon Chavis, the defensive back, is helped off the field. So congratulations to Warwick Dunn keeping that streak alive. He now stands among some great names in ACC history. With this, his this is his sixth consecutive game of 100 yards or more. Charlie Wysocki, remember that name out of Maryland about 15 years ago? He had six in a row. Randy Cuthbert at the end of the 80s. Steve Atkins of Maryland had seven straight. The all-time mark in the ACC, Ted Brown, hung nine in a row on the board. Nine consecutive 100-yard games against Division I opposition. Can you imagine? That is, I tell you something, when you look at the records and you look at the company that he's with, and you, you mentioned it earlier, he's just a junior. And he's already on this all-time team for Bobby Bowden. He is doing such a fine job for this offense. But again, you know, we have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, Clay Shiver, who's really leading the way for Dunn. You see a lot of these plays going over the middle. That's because of the great blocks they're getting from their All-American center. Mark McAvoy, a linebacker on the stop that time. It is second down. Cannell decides to check to a different play at the line of scrimmage, and here it comes. Warwick Dunn on the call, but that's going nowhere. Tucker Grace, the linebacker, with two interceptions in the first half, was one of a couple of deeks. On the play, not taking the fake. Calvin Moses, the other linebacker, there as well. Tucker with a nice job of, of shooting those gaps, filling those holes, and his guys up front, they do a good job of keeping those, those guards and those centers off of him so he can make the plays that are necessary. Uh, Dunn lost a couple of yards there. I would not be surprised if pretty shortly, if not right there, he's not pulled for the rest of the afternoon. Cannell hit as he releases the pass flutters. The pass is caught at the 12-yard line, although Danny Cannell paid the price. Philip Riley, one of 10 receivers who have caught a pass today from Cannell, hauled it in just outside the 10-yard line. I mean, now, when you say that to yourself, Paul, 10 people, 10 receivers have gotten in on the action. Take a look at the shot from Cannell. 
that gets your attention. You can see the throw very wobbly still gets there. But that's unfortunately what you have to do against the quarterback. You just can't allow him to sit back there and have the luxury of not being harassed. 27 completions today, five touchdowns, more than 300 yards passing for Canell. Zip, pass, end zone, just shy of the end zone is Philip Riley. How did he not get in? Missed it by that much from having a record tying sixth touchdown pass. Ran into his own man, it appeared, at the goal line. We'll see, he finds Riley, and then it's kind of a, well, I'm going to get in, but you have to, again, you look at the you look at the shot, and I think he thought he was just going to muscle his way in. Ron Dugan was uh, trying to block down there. Here's another touchdown. Pooh Bear Williams is at the bottom of the pile somewhere with the honey jar. Now, we got a flag on the play. And Delay a game, maybe? The... Illegal substitution on the play by the defense. Penalty is refused. Touchdown. Couldn't keep up with the substitutions of Florida State in the hurry-up offense. Isn't that something? A hurry-up offense. Imagine if they went into the huddle and talked about what they wanted to do. That would be something. The touchdown stands for Pooh Bear Williams. By the ground this time, rather than through the air, the Knolls have a touchdown. And I'm uh, with the extra point checking my notes. I believe that's just the second rushing touchdown today. That's right. Preston and Pooh Bear have run for touchdowns. Cadell has thrown for five. A thoroughly dominating drive by Florida State to open our second half. And down on the Asagi sidelines, here's Scott. Well, Paul Ashley and the Soggy stands. You know, this is Parents Weekend. Thousands of moms and dads here for the uh, Parents Weekend celebration. But when your son plays football at Florida State, it's always Parents Weekend. And I'm joined now by the mom and dad of fellow who just scored that touchdown. Now, do you call him Pooh Bear at home? Yes, it's Pooh Bear. He's always been Pooh Bear. Charlotte Williams is uh, Clarence Pooh Bear Williams' mom. And, of course, Clarence Sr. Now, what are you thinking? No one called you Pooh Bear when you were young. Oh, no, that's just something we stuck on him. And how did he get that nickname? Well, it, uh, I was impressed by it when, when he was born, and it just stuck ever since. Now, Clarence came back weighing about uh, 300 pounds before this season began, and the coaches were a little concerned with that. So, Mom, uh, tell me, what did the typical meal consist of for Pooh Bear over the summer? Uh, he eats a lot. <laughs> he loves vegetables, chicken, greens. Whatever he wants, probably, right? Yeah. All right. Very good. Good to have you here on Parents Weekend. Thanks for joining us. Charlotte and Clarence Williams. That ball. With the park is on. On the defense. 15. First down. Not about to leave with the oh, uh, no. rain falling hard, are they? Yeah, but I, I don't know if I'm buying into that vegetable thing. I mean, he, <laughs> he's not 270 eating a lot of vegetables now. <laughs> I think she's not helping him out. Not broccoli and carrots. No, no. And if bro broccoli, a lot of cheese smothered on it. <laughs> More green beans, please, Mom. I must eat healthy. Oh. <laughs> well, the Williams family here today, they're hearty souls, the Seminole faithful that have remained in the ballpark this afternoon. And the pass, incomplete. The intended retarget in the vicinity, Dan Ballou, a new quarterback, David Sercio, the sophomore, on in relief of Rusty LaRue. You remember Sercio from last season. He came on in relief of LaRue and directed Wake on a pair of late touchdown drives. Now, it looked as though Chichio was throwing the slant and Ballou wasn't uh, electing to run it. Now, either there was a communication problem or he said, hey, I'm not coming <laughs> across the middle. Do you understand? Oh. <laughs> Man in motion to B.D. Davis. Here is Lewis, who has been effective, but there is a greeting party, and Daryl Bush leads it. Daryl Bush, number 44, back from knee problems. One of the strongest Seminoles going. Bench press is well over 400 pounds. And watch the upper body strength evident here as Sergio just gets it to Lewis. Oh, that's a heck of a play. You, you talk about uh, saving a fumble there, a busted play. Does a good job of scooping it up with one hand and getting it to Lewis. From the Orlando area, Errol Bush, Mike Brantley High School, Altamont. Third down and four, Sergio. Floats it over the middle to nobody in particular. Nearly picked off Marlon Green was there. And it's fourth down. 
I don't think that the middle is going to be an option in this second half. Maybe something to the sidelines, some, some, uh, some corner routes maybe, the post, but the middle doesn't appear to be there. LaRue with his helmet off talking to Jim Caldwell. He owns an ACC championship basketball ring. Played in the ACC baseball tournament for three seasons. He's been the quarterback in Winston-Salem. A field goal try here of 52 yards. Bill Hollows attempting what would be a career best. The kick is away but fades late. And is no good. Desperate for points. Wake attempts a very long 52-yard field goal into a driving 15-mile-an-hour wind and a rainstorm as well. Anything for points. Kind of like that, uh, that fake pun, huh? <laughs> I'm sure, Jim, if he had to do it again, wouldn't. Wouldn't. <laughs> Solid football man, though. Yes, I tell you. The, the people that, that he has learned under and worked with, the Joe Paternos and Dennis Greens, and these people, I tell you, they've been so instrumental in his, in his coaching career. He, he's a fine teacher. Thad Busby on in relief of Danny Cannell. His first snap today in the toss sweep comes to the rock and pressed him to the 40 to 45 and up to the 48-yard line of first down. So the depth chart becomes a factor. Kenyon Chavis. Up from the secondary to make the step. Rock Preston's having an impressive afternoon himself today. That was his sixth carry. He's picked up 74 yards. And that's impressive because you take out a Dunn and you go with the backup, if you want to call him that, and Preston, who's just a sophomore himself, and he's running just as hard and just as uh, just as good. The six foot three inch senior in Busby. You saw his numbers. And they'll run the reverse. E.G. Green needs a block. Too many white tricks there, and he's still on his feet. 45 40, first down, and into the sideline. He made count of one, two, three, miss. Well, you know, offensively, you start running out of things to do, and so you say, look, we haven't, we haven't uh, executed a reverse yet in our, in our arsenal today. Let's come with it. And so they do, but now Wake Forest does a good job of stretching it out. They stay home, they play the perimeter very well, but they miss tackles. One, two, three tackles. Once Cooper hits the outside, he's off to the races. If you break down and make the tackle, that's a loss. D'Angelo Solomon, Rick Gardner, the defensive end, along with Jeffrey Myers, the demon back, all came up empty trying to make the stop for Wake. First and 10. And Preston is dropped in the backfield. Well, there's a fine defensive play. Myers this time does make the stop. Plays a couple of positions, and he's just a freshman. And, and, and that's what you needed. If you get that on the previous play to E.G. Green, I called him Cooper. That's my mistake. But once again, out in the open field, good penetration. Watch this right here. Just get him down by the ankles. That's all you need. It's not always about the big, vicious hit. You want to get the defender on the ground. Second down and 12. Kevin Long in for the All-American Clay Scheiber at center. He bends over the football. He's going to be a good one himself. From midfield. Busby deep downfield for E.G. And it's batted away in double coverage. The ball hung up there, too. Green, the intended target, the seven-yard line, was well defended. Well, the, Solomon over there. Pardon me, Dave. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say the ability to strike from anywhere on the field has, has really been the, uh, the, the, the trademark of the Seminole team in 95. And so you see Busby come out. And he's trying to go for it all on the uh, in midfield. And this is where people may say, well, yeah, but Bobby's pouring it off. But this is a second unit that he's working with. He can't just go out there and say, just go through the motion. Now, what if kids Cannell, have to play hard. What if Cannell, hopefully, does not go down? But what if he is lost with a rugged schedule coming up? Fumble, loose ball. Who has it? Wake has the football. Wake, it appeared at the bottom of the pile, came up with it. That's the case. The Demon Deeks may be trailing 48 to 13, but they continue to play hard. And the recovery made by Marquis Taylor, the Florida native, who returns home and has a big play to show for it. Well, you know, you can look at this one, and there it is. You got the gloves on. It's raining. It's wet. It's slippery. Your number one priority, hang on to the football first, and then you execute second. But you got to hold on to that pigskin first. The second turnover, record it now as the third turnover today, committed by Florida State. Two Canell interceptions, and now the cough. 
the fumble on the bad snap. But your point four was well taken. If you have somebody go down, what do you do? I mean, they have to learn how to execute as well. These are the only times that they're going to get into a football game in games like this. They have to work on their execution just as well. Now, Florida State has a rugged road to hoe. In November, they have to go to Virginia, to Chapel Hill to face North Carolina. Maryland here, who has had its moments this season, and conclude the year with the mighty Gators in Florida. That's going to be some game. How's that a closing month of play? It's a tough month. <laughs> Three of the four games on the road. It's no longer a cakewalk to travel no. to Charlottesville. It's never been easy in Chapel Hill. First and ten for the Demon Deacon. LaRue returns to duty after being spotted for a series. And the inside handoff to Herman Woolard. A loss of two. It's raining hard now, Dave. And yeah, it's going to be that kind of game now. When you, you, you see the conditions like this, the wind's blowing hard, the, the field gets a little soft and muddy, you have to start checking your footing, and now you kind of wonder, well, hey, we're going to put it in the air. Is, is the visibility going to be impaired or what? But this is what the game is all about. A lot of people, a lot of people perform very well in the mud and the slop in games like this. Who are the mudders now? The Who mudders? wants to play? Yeah, get dirty. The rain dripping off the face mask. Avalaro, the senior. From his 40, under pressure. He throws, and it's picked off at the 28-yard line. Florida State with another INT, and it's Harold Battles on a fluttering pass intended for Dan Ballou. And again, pressure on the quarterback played a role in that Oski, that INT. Yeah, the old Oski, but then again, Ballou gets caught up on the pass route. He can't, he can't really get to where he wants to be because of one of the defenders. I'm not sure that that one couldn't have been called. It was questionable, but he just couldn't get to his spot. If you can see from the bottom, Ballou tries to get there, and he can't. The pressure's there. Ballou gets hung up. And that's what happens. Again, you've got some communication problems between Ballou and his quarterback, LaRue. That's the second time we've seen Ballou not where he was supposed to be. Florida State up to the line of scrimmage now, enjoying a 48-13 lead. And in the backfield, 32, Khalid Abdullah. Then compared to Edgar Bennett, he is the lead block back, and he provides the block there, and a flag goes down as Dee Feaster totes the football. They have holding. It appeared that way, the way the flag was thrown from the umpire. Our referee, Ronald Cherry. Holding offense. Perhaps on Melvin Pearsall, the tight end. You mean these guys hold? Oh, they do on occasion. Wow. He locks Holding them up. on the offense, 10 yards, still first. Be honest, uh, I could not tell from that fray, but our umpire today and George Burton could very definitively throwing the flag. But really, the, the Demons played it very well. And they've done well to the outside on occasions, but they've really gotten themselves in trouble by getting hooked on those outside tosses and pitches. First out of 19 yards to go. Play action. Busby in trouble. Scrambles. Throws it upfield, and it's dropped. Feaster had a couple of blockers in front of him, and he dropped the football. Nice job, too, for Busby to buy some time away from the pressure applied by David Zadell, the defensive end. Well, Zadell does a good job. He gets pressure. He moves him out of the pocket. Again, it's a it's a different ball game when you have to scramble and throw on the run. The footing isn't as, as well as you would like for it to be. But, again, this is all about pressure. That's the name of the game. You pressure the opposition's quarterback, usually you're going to win the confrontation. Thad's hunting his first completion of the afternoon. And they'll fake the reverse. Feaster still on his feet. And up to uh, very close to the 30-yard line. Jeffrey Myers, that hustling young freshman, up on the stop. A couple of first-year players in the Atlantic Coast Conference connecting there. With eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Boy, and you know, you talked about it for young guys to... To have an opportunity like this, regardless of the score, whether you're on the, the Deacon side of the Seminoles, but to be in the game with a quarter and a half left to play the game, this is a chance to, to, to really work on your skills. Abdullah the fullback. Feast through the tail. Abdullah blocking and boom. Up front, nowhere to run. 
Kelvin Jones, the defensive end. He, too, 54, a freshman. Filled the hole. Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Nice. Yeah, big guy, oh, too, yeah. close to 260. That's what you like to see from a defensive line coach, a defensive coordinator, a head coach, a big man like that that can get down the line of scrimmage, shed the blocker, stick his face in there, make a nice stop. Look at that punting average. The first time today that Sean Liss has been called upon. He's enjoying a career year. Liss. Oh, tight spiral. Driving all the way back is Solomon. And Angelo nowhere to go. Great special teams play there by Florida State. Inclement weather or not. Deion Humphrey hustles down to make the tackle. The raindrops fall, but Florida State is well in front. A 49-yard punt as Wake Forest backed up to its 26-yard line. And an incomplete pass over the middle. A pass intended for Daryl Braswell. Let's check in with Scott. How you faring down there, Mr. Atwell? Well, I'll tell you, it's not too good, but I, I guess Wayne Messam is worse than us. He has a third-degree separation of his shoulder. If you think back to the first half, Florida State's wide huh? receiver. I talked to team doctor uh, Dom Haney. He says that Messam is going to be out three to five weeks. The best they can hope for is the getting back for the Florida game and maybe the bowl. Thanks a lot, Scott. That's terrible news when you add up the fact that the Florida State would be playing Georgia Tech, Virginia, and North Carolina all within the next three weeks. Here's John Lewis. Ruggedly, he drops the football, took the big hit, and Florida State is there. Ruggedly carrying it, and he put it on the ground. And Lamont Green, the linebacker number 40, gets off the bottom of the pile with the ball. Florida State owns the football. We'll take a look again. We talked about the conditions. Nice pitch out there to Lewis. He's done a good job all day long, but you got to hold on to the football like it's gold. It's Holding the head. On the offense, that penalty is refused. We have first down. Just a monster hit. That's all you can say. It happens. I mean, yeah, we all know you have to hold on to that football, but when you, you take a shot out in the open like Lewis did, just jarred that football loose. That's what you're taught as a defender. Somebody knock it out. Just a bone-jarring hit. Well, a freshman, a freshman are owning the stage here in the third quarter. Lamont Green, the freshman from Miami. Anybody want to sip? Coming down. A gully washer is the old expression, wow. and there's where it comes from. A downpour. Indo Campbell, Thad Busby. Hunting his first completion, throws again. And this time it is caught at the 27-yard line. In front of D'Angelo Solomon, E.G. Green somehow getting squint, saw through the rain to make the snap. Uh, Florida State practiced in a driving rainstorm for two hours Tuesday. This is why they stayed outdoors to work. Yeah, you know, you talk about good concentration, and uh, boy, that's just an excellent catch. And they're looking at the coaches saying, why are we out here in this? What's the matter with you? We're the number one team in the country. This is the reason why. Some days it rains. Busby for six. It's batted away, incomplete. At the goal line intended for Wayne Messam, and there was D'Angelo Solomon. Injured earlier, he was active from our opening kickoff. He's been one of the standouts yes. today for the Demon Deacons. Take a look at him. Keeps his eye on the ball at all time. Plays the receiver very well, but you want to talk about concentration, that's a big-time college football play right there. I know the score is 48-13, but this young man has continued to play hard the entire football game. You can't play it any better than that. E.G. Green, the intended receiver, rather than Messam, and he's wide again, split out to the far left side. Cooper to the near side right. Inside handoff. Here comes Khalid Abdullah. Abdullah, touchdown! Abdullah, the freshman, with his first collegiate touchdown. A big moment for him, and he's jumping up and down with happiness. He'll remember this one the rest of his life. I guarantee you, go back, son, get the football, put it in your trophy case. Again, just a basic dive. You'll see up the middle, nothing uh, special about the play. But this offensive line, and we haven't really said enough about them, one of the best in the entire country. Even the backups are very, very solid. Bentley, through the rain, adds the extra point. 
Abdullah with a 27-yard gallop through the raindrops puts Florida State in front with the extra point, 55 to 13. Abdullah out of the fullback position, not the tailback, runs over some of his own people. Get out of the way, here I come. Breaks it to the outside, shows good speed. Paul, we're talking about Dunn, Rock Preston. Where'd this kid come from? I mean, here's a freshman, Rock Preston's a sophomore, Dunn's a, a junior. Wow, that's that's Bobby Bowden, he's got it going on. That's all I can say. Abdullah with a moment he'll always treasure. As the rain continues to come down hard in the capital city of what we thought was the Sunshine State. Here's a drenched Scott Bentley putting his foot into it and kicking it very, very deep and in fact into the end zone. Wake Forest will begin at its 20-yard line. We mentioned the fact that Khalid Abdullah has been compared to Edgar Bennett. Enjoy to find professional run. Abdullah out of Davie, Florida. South Florida with the 27-yard touchdown run. And Florida State has its third highest scoring total of the season. Over 50 for the third time this year. 70 against Duke. They topped out at 77 against NC State and now with 55 on the board compared to the 56 they posted against Wake a year ago. Turn the boys. Slicing off the right side for a yard or so, and we still have six minutes remaining, Mr. Hogan. And the 55 is right at their scoring average this season. They've been averaging 55 points per game, so they they have matched that once again. They're on record with that. I'm sure they're close to that 600 mark that, that they have been uh, eclipsing the total offense. So you have to look at the consistency of the program of the football team, and they're right on the money. Second down after the gain of one and uh, the intended receiver, Ron Dugan. It's important here for Wade to slow the pace of this game, to hold on to the football, make first downs, execute, try and improve. This game obviously is long lost, but they have games down the stretch that they have a chance of winning. They, they go can. to North Carolina, they go to Duke, and they have Georgia Tech and NC State coming the Carter Finley Stadium. Sure, they can help themselves here. I mean, although they're out of this ball game, they can still work on overall execution. It's going to help them, as you mentioned, games down the line. Third and nine. The pass flutters, and it's nearly picked off by Robert Hammond. Hammond should have made the INT. Unable to do so. And it's three and out again. And when you look at that, three and out on just about every series you have to wonder how much longer your defense can hold up I mean regardless of the, the the conditions how hot or how cold it is that's a lot of time on the field FSU may come after this one Mike Strazeri to face an eight-man rush two Seminoles stuff it the wide outs and PC alone in return he took a long time but he got it away the ball bounds at midfield and rolls into Seminole territory. It takes a wake roll, and it's whistled dead at the 38. Strazeri, very fortunate. He got the kick away. Oh, he's been one of the bright spots today. Look how close he comes here, Dave, to having this block. You know, he's been under the gun all day long, but he's done such a fine job. That's about as close as it gets. He's done an excellent job of kicking for Wake Forest. I mean, he has he has put their defense in positions to where they can do something with the floor, with the, the Florida State offense, but they're just too powerful. But you have to take your hat off to that young gunner. Sean Key nearly at it blocked. Feaster sliding now on the wet surface. Out to the 45-yard line. It seems it rains every time these two teams get together. A year ago in Winston-Salem, it absolutely poured before the game. Rained here as well a couple of years ago. And if you're awake, you always feel like the weather gods are against you playing Florida State. 55-13, less than five minutes to go, and only the third for Jim Caldwell. And his Demon Deacons, Busby. Second and three. Keeps it on the ground to Feaster. Feaster explodes into the second.
secondary, races toward the end zone, cut it off, touchdown, D. Feaster and FSU. We're over 60 now. Feaster with a 55-yard run. Now, in situations like this, of course, it's obvious that you've got total domination at the line of scrimmage, but at the same time, you have to attribute a lot of this to just poor block, poor tackling. That's all you can say because there's no rule that says you can't leave your feet. You can't dive. You can't swan dive. You can't go after the man. You may not get the clear shot at the shoulder area, but you most certainly can try and make the shoestring tackle. Bentley and a monsoon. That's good. Now, these are the kind of games I remember practices used to be so much fun at times when it got real wet. You can really enjoy yourself as a player down there when it's sloppy and you're sliding and Feaster maintains his feet and races 55 yards. I mean, that's he's untouched. No one lays a glove on him. And, and again, you're talking about just getting off the block and making some plays. You can leave your feet. And a lot of times when you get back in the meeting rooms on Monday and coaches will point out to you and they'll say, here, take a look at this. If only you would have just left your feet right here and they'll show it on the film, you could have made that stop, and players, players will acknowledge that. So Feaster has scored. Khalid Abdullah has scored. Pooh Bear has scored. And five separate Danny Cannell touchdown passes. He hit ten different receivers before departing. Have Florida State in front 62 to 13. I would say that that number one ranking is you know, pretty insured, at least for another week. It's intact, no doubt about it. I don't <laughs> see him losing it. <laughs> we understand Nebraska was struggling early with the Tigers of Mizzou today. Nebraska ranked second in the nation. Here is Bentley. Up flies Marion Estes to the boundary and the 24-yard line before rolling down. Estes on the return, stopped by Shevin Smith. And again, when you talk about giving credit where credit is due, you have to give that to this to this defense of, of Florida State because Estes has, has been a very important part of Wake Forest's offense, uh, returning kicks as a receiver, running reverses, and they've really contained him. They've kept him in check this entire afternoon. We haven't really called his name a lot. David Sergio back for a second round with the Knowles. Flips it out of the backfield and slipping is Savage. Savage fails to reach the line of scrimmage. Henry Crockett was one of the reasons why the Seminole linebackers. Now you go with the nice swing pass there, and you're hoping that if you can get the ball out in the flat, that maybe a Seminole will come up, he'll misjudge his tackling, he'll slip, he'll fall, and your, your running back has that clear vision to run for daylight. Sergio, the sophomore, tall at 6'4". Here again, Savage, going the wrong way. And again, Mr. Crockett says, how do you do? Henry, the junior linebacker from Pompano Beach, number 45, it's third down and wholesale substitutions for Florida State. And see, Paul, if you can go straight ahead, I think you're going to have better success at running the football. It's going to be tough to run against this team anyway, but when you try and go wide now, the footing isn't going to be there. The conditions are just so bad that you have to go straight ahead. You try and avoid changing directions if you can. Nine separate new faces arrive defensively for Florida State. Sergio against a four-man stunning rush. Throws too high. He had a pair of receivers over there. Threw too high for Lewis and too short for Ballou. He split the defense, but he split his receiving core, too. And, and in his defense, the ball must be nearly impossible oh, to hold boy. on to. You know, not only is it slippery, but it's heavy. It's heavier. And I know the officials, they do a good job of trying to cover it up. But once the water hits that football, you've been there, that thing becomes like a, like a bag of sugar. Maybe not that heavy, but it's a lot more heavier than, than normal. Feaster awaits the kick from Strazeri. Calls for and makes the fair catch at the 49-yard line of flag down two. We may have interference, although it appeared that Florida State's Troy Saunders shoved a Wake 
coverage man close to the kicker. We have interference on the punt return. What, what do we have? Okay. Kick catch interference. Well, the two yard bill. First down. I thought uh, in Wake's defense again, Troy Sanders had, had shoved the coverage man for the Demon Deacons close to Dee Feaster, but that's not the way our officiating crew sees it. In my opinion doesn't matter one bit. <laughs> That's why I didn't say anything on that particular call. Because <laughs> mine wouldn't have been out there, will you? No, no. <laughs> Florida State all the way today, leading 62 to 13. Busby turns and hands and the inside give to Khalid Abdullah. Rob Hyman, the defensive tackle on the stuff. So you have the future of this program evidenced by a talent like Khalid Abdullah, D. Feaster, Rock Preston of freshman two, Pooh Bears a sophomore. It'll be a case next year of Florida State. Again, just reloading the interchangeable set. parts. As far as his running attack, he said all he needs is to keep that complement of, of, of offensive linemen and a quarterback, and he's there. The 1992 High School Player of the Year in Florida. Busby turns, keeps it on the ground, and tucks it into the waiting arms of Jermaine Green, who's back on offense after being loaned to the secondary to help out with a depleted cornerback core. Well, you know something? That, that goes to show you the kind of depth and the kind of team that Bobby Bowden has. If he can take two of his secondary personnel and say, you guys go ahead and get surgery, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. We'll hold it down until you get back. And I'll That's put a, power. And I'll put a running back yeah. over there. Florida State may indeed set the all-time single-game offensive yardage mark today. Busby to the 30. That's a first down on the bootleg, and he looks to be none the worse for wear. Now that's that's all Wake Forest needs now is a quarterback who can run. And you've got all these other major runners out there for the Seminoles, and now you get a quarterback who shows the ability to run as well. The most yards Wake Forest has ever surrendered was to Clemson 14 years ago. 756 total yards against the Tigers. Florida State is less than 100 yards from that mark. It could be one of the all-time wipeouts that Wake has ever suffered. Here comes Jermaine Green. Run into the sideline. And he gets up with some impunity. He took offense to that. Damian Daniel belting him into his own sideline. Chavis there as well. So we've had six separate running backs carry the ball, ten separate Seminoles catch the ball, two quarterbacks today. What haven't we seen? Offensively, we've had the entire menu, <laughs> much like that Chinese buffet full. you yeah, took on last night, Mr. <laughs> Logan. <laughs> Everything but the wonton soup. <laughs> And it's a soup today, no Campbell. <laughs> a flag flies, and the carry is inside the 25 to the 24. You should have seen this former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Oh, I wasn't that Pittsburgh bad. Panther, Pitt is it star, <laughs> at the Chinese buffet last night in Tallahassee. I left my mark. <laughs> you certainly did. Holding, offense, 10 yards, first out. First time I've ever seen a restaurant owner present a plaque to a departing customer. <laughs> oh, I wasn't that bad now. <laughs> it was good. Florida State guilty of grabbing on to a Wake jersey. Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Logan up here, and the man that deserves the medal down in the trenches, oh, Scott yeah. Atwell. <laughs> he began the day. It was a beautiful sun-splashed he... afternoon. He looked cool. <laughs> that Armani suit may need to go to the dry cleaners. What do you think? I think so. Here's Khalid. Khalid to the 30 and not much more. They're just mucking it up there. We will say this field drains very well. There is a drainage system on it, but it is beginning to wear. For five straight weeks, the Knowles have held either a football game or an extensive practice in Doak Campbell Stadium. And today, with this torrential downpour, 
and playing four quarters of football, it's not going to help things. No, it's not so much the way it drains. I mean, you have an excellent point there, but after a while, in certain areas, it just gets chewed up, and it just can't, it can't maintain this look or this condition. Well, it's the end of the third quarter, and Florida State pouring it on. We head to the fourth, the top-ranked team in the nation, leading 62 to 13 here on Prime. 62-13 today on Prime. Florida State well in front of the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. And once again, here's Scott Atwell. Well, Paul, I'm joined by former Florida State kicker Dan Mowry. And I'm sure you've seen Scott Bentley uh, struggling here early on in this game today. And you can sympathize with those mental troubles a kicker can go through. There's a lot of times in games like these, you know, you tend to have a mental lapse. But, you know, I have a lot of faith in Scott. Scott's a great kicker. You know, things just, sometimes they just don't go your way. And how, how do you get out of a slump like this, though? You just go back to basics. You know, just say to yourself, you know, there's two little goal posts. I'm kicking one ball. I know how to do this. I've been doing it my whole life. Just go out there and do it. That's some advice that Scott Bentley is going to need to heed as the Seminoles get to the meat of their schedule. All right. Thank you very much, Scott. As the Knolls own the football on a very rainy afternoon in Doak Campbell Stadium. Dan Mowry. You know, he handled the emotional challenge and the personal disappointment of those missed field goals against the University of Miami about as well as anybody I've seen. And they brought in Scott Bentley, the cover boy of Sports Illustrated, without ever playing a down. They brought him here to campus, and Mowry just took it straight on and ended up being one of the more admired figures among his peers here. Field goal tried this of 47 yards. It'll be close, and it just hit the crossbar. He nearly nailed it, did Bentley. When you look at these conditions, and I, I, I'm sure that the field is just, uh, I tell you, from where we are, it looks bad. And I imagine being down there, but to still come that close. Because, again, it's smart on the part of Bobby Bowden. You never know when you're going to be in a situation, in a big game, when it's on the line, and it's pouring down rain like it is, to have to step up to the plate and deliver. So it's good strategy on the part of Bobby. White comes right back at it. As the water begins to build. Near the playing field, Sergio throws it quickly into the flat. And that isn't the way they drew that up. Marion Estes dove for it, but it's an incomplete pass. Trying to get it out in the flat as quickly as possible. I think it's good when you get it out there and you, you allow the receiver to see the entire field and let him go from there. If he's got good athletic ability, he can make something happen usually that far out. Nice play. I mean, if you can get it out there in the flat, if you can get a few blockers out there, usually you can pick up some extra yardage. And if someone misses, you never know. You could have a big 70-yard touchdown. Second down and 10. Sergio on the roll. Fires downfield. It's batted around and picked off. FSU owns the football, and here comes Dexter Jackson. Dexter Jackson hurling his way close to the 20-yard line. Another first-year Seminole making his mark on a rainy Saturday afternoon. And that's pretty frightening. I mean, we keep talking about these first-year players, but as Chichio rolls out, he's drawing all that attention to him. A sea of defensive backs. They just go and cover that receiver. you got Lyman chasing him, and once it's tipped up in air, you take a look again. You can see twin receivers to the right. They try and break open, do the stop and go, but he finds a... A soft spot right there. Hard to say if it could have been caught. In these conditions, I say no. But once it gets tipped like that, it's up in the air. It's anybody's ball. Now, a quarterback will tell you the receiver got both hands on it. Desmond Clark did. He ought to make, <laughs> he ought to make that. That's catch. the rule. And the toss sweep to the far side. Inside the 20. Todd Pryor, it appears. Let's see. We're deep into the jersey numbers now for Florida State. Yeah, we're almost to the point now where it could be A and B. I mean, we're going through this entire roster. Bobby Bounds let them all play today. From the 18-yard line. 
Inside handoff this time and down to the 14 13. Khalid Abdullah on the toe. Gardner on the defensive stop. Abdullah is built just in the mold of a fullback. Kind of like Pooh Bear Light might yeah, be. Yeah, Pooh Bear Light. There you go. But you know, Bowden, you know he's looking for one thing, and that's execution. And that's what he wants to see. And he really felt that last week against Miami, team didn't execute as well as they could have. And so now he has an opportunity to finally see some of these young players in a game like this. And he's looking at execution as well. Busby turns. And Jackson working the far side. Down inside the 10, down to the 14 yard line. Jackson, I meant Johnson. Dallas Johnson on the carry. So it continues. Eight running backs, ten receivers, and three soaked broadcasters. 60,000 fans in Florida State trying to prepare for a November run against the toughest portion of its ACC schedule. The Knowles will leave here this afternoon 28-0, unbeaten, and a three-plus year reign of terror on the Atlantic Coast Conference. I mean, when you start to consider those numbers and the consistency and the, the way they've won convincingly, even some of the nail biters down to the end, but to, to have that kind of record in a conference is, is unmatched. That's nope. something. No Florida State team, Dave, has ever scored more than 70 on three separate Saturday afternoons in one season. With 12 minutes left in this game, Florida State is going to come very close to 70 if it scores here. Going for it on fourth and one. And the toss back has the first down. First down, FSU. Just run the toss sweep. Holding the football. Marcus Bullock. You know, it has been just a, a tough, tough afternoon for Wake Forest. They knew coming in. You can see the pickup here. Nothing fancy once again, just the toss. It's a big play for FSU, but they run just as well as they pass. Coming in, the touchdown ratio was even. How do you defend that? You really don't. I, you have to avoid getting yourself in these situations. Power football inside. Inside the 10-yard line. Abdullah with one score this afternoon. His first as a collegian might want to get another one. You know, it's interesting you said that you used the word power football, and that's what this has been in certain situations. We've seen a lot of finesse. We've seen the, the nice fluid receivers, the, uh, the, the, the guys up front, but, but we've seen power football up the middle, basic power football, and you have to appreciate that if you enjoy the game. Busby. Off the snap, the toss sweep, nowhere to go. Wake surging defensively on second down. David Zadel pushing Brooks back. That's the way you get down the line of scrimmage. That's how you string it out. You, you don't lose containment. Nice play. You know the Seminoles like to go outside. They love the toss and don't run it until you stop it. But you get the good penetration. You don't get hooked. You beat your man. And there's nowhere for him to go. That's picture perfect by Wake Forest. You can use that one in the defensive meeting rooms to show how you stop a toss. On third down and needing 14, Brooks will try the near side. He's at the 15. Down to the 10-yard line and not enough, of course, for the first down. <laughs> And does the field goal unit come on, or does Bobby Bowden continue to run plays at the Demon Dakes? Well, they'll send on Scott Bentley. And here comes Bentley. Well, your kickers can always use the work. Everybody else can, too. But the kickers, I'll tell you, they can't get enough of this because conditions, as I mentioned earlier, conditions may be like this. And the big time games and you're going to have to come through. You can't say it was raining. This could be a national championship kick here. The kick by Bentley and this one is good from 27 yards away. 65 13 the Knowles continue to roll in Tallahassee. Bentley with the field goal 65 13 Knowles. The people just love people responsible for making our telecast. 
Well, the reason it's not like that on the field is because the prescription athletic turf has drains underneath the football field that are sucking the water down. They end right at the, at the yard line, at the sideline markers. The field is dry, but everything around it is wet. It would have been muck just like that. There was a game Florida State played at Duke a couple of years ago. They were literally ankle deep in mud at kickoff. Bentley kicking off. And from the five yard line, here comes Savage. Out to the 22, 23 yard line. The rain begins to abate just a little bit, lightens up. Sean Key, pardon me, on the stop. You know, I'm sure that for, for both coaches, uh, in conditions like this, sure, you, you know you have to live with them. There's nothing you can do, but for Bobby, he's got the luxury that he can play so many of his younger guys. He doesn't have to worry about running the risk of injury. That's the luxury when you have a program, the way he has built this program in the last 20 years to where it is now, that he can pull his regulars out and go with freshmen. Sir Chio. On the delay, the late handoff. Savage on the carry. Demetro Stevens makes the stop in front of his head coach. Savage primarily a special teams player today. And there's big Demetro. The freshman. He's had a right angle problem. And a penalty. Penalty against the defensive unit. A major infraction of 15 yard step off. Oh, pardon me. A 10 yard step off. And uh, our referee today and Ronald Cherry is Mike's beginning to be waterlogged. No one's immune here this afternoon. On first down. Following the penalty, play action. Sir Chio. Flush from the pocket. Manages to unload it. And he has it complete for a gain of three. All that running around, and it's none other than Savage on the receiving end. <laughs> run over here, run over there. That's a lot of running. For the <laughs> James oh, DeVico, man. tackle number 49. But, but to, you give him credit. I mean, you take a look. He goes with the play action, fools nobody, does a good job, knows he's probably going to take the lick, but does find the receiver, threads the needle very well. It, it's important to come back and try and play with confidence after you've thrown a couple of interceptions, and it seems as though he's doing that. Setting up, flaring it. Savage this time. Oh, he fights through a tackle. And he's close to the first down marker. Kept the legs churning. And Harold Battles will be credited on the stop. Sir Chio was the number two quarterback a year ago, but Cooklick, Brian Cooklick, can beat him out this year. And you see the Jackson passing the hit oh there. Oh, boy, there's a shot. Yeah, the second one was a big leg. Yeah, you missed the first one. Hey, I got by one, but it's hard to dodge two bullets. And yet he remained on his feet. Brian Cooklick had taken over the number one job, and he broke his arm against Tulane. Then complete, thrown short at the feet of Savage. So Sir Chio is back in the quarterback mix. <laughs> You know, one thing that the Seminoles have done all afternoon, not only have they played well offensively, we know that, but defensively, and I think a lot of times you don't hear enough about their defense. This is a fine unit. Applies a lot of pressure up front, not like the DBs. I think they're secondary, very intact. Florida State will own the football in a minute. Mike Strazeri just does get it off. Dee Feaster makes the catch at his 20. Ahead to the 30. Rolled up shy of the 40-yard line. Can Florida State score 70 points for a third time this year? Perhaps they can. They'll own the football when we return. On Prime today, you see the time remaining. I'm Paul Kennedy. Dave Logan alongside Scott Atwell swimming around the sidelines as well. John Lowe is our director. Jeff DeMoss, our producer today. Bill Moore, our technical director. And the sweep to the near side. Uh, On the carry, ready Dallas ready Johnson. Next week in the Atlantic Coast Conference, the Terps will be hosting the Tigers. Virginia travels to Austin, Texas. Duke has but a short drive. NC State will come a-calling. 
Wake Forest will find itself in Keenan Stadium amidst the pine trees and Georgia Tech in a 3.30 start will be right here on hopefully a drier afternoon. Our third quarterback for Florida State today, Tony Labrizzi, and at the helm. And look out, we're off and running, Khalid Abdullah. On a magic carpet ride, Florida State has hit the 70-point plateau. Now, I don't think that they have ever done this in their history, Paul. 70 points and <laughs> three times in a season. And, and I tell you, it's going to be interesting once this year expires, regardless of what happens at the end, the battle for the top tailback spot. I think all these guys are going to make a strong case. They're going to have a tough time unseating Mr. Dunn, but this kid and Rock, and you know, we've talked about these guys so much, but this really is impressive to, to have so many of these young players to come in as freshmen and perform like they've done. 71, almost 72 points in the afternoon in the rain. Khalid Abdullah with two touchdowns today. Damian Harrell with two touchdowns today. Danny Cannell threw for five. Ten running backs, ten receivers, 70 points. The band plays on. What a party in Tallahassee. Khalid Abdullah becomes the second Seminole to gain 100 yards this afternoon. This will be his first game with 100. He has but six more in a row if he is going to equal <laughs> his fellow tailback Warwick Dunn. His second touchdown of the afternoon here on this big gallop. But what's impressive is that this was designed to go inside. He's following the footsteps of Warwick Dunn, improvising, taking it outside. The hole isn't there. I'll take it out. Shows excellent speed for a fullback. Hey, this big man can run the football. In terms of total yards, it's a 747 jumbo jet. Hmm. 747. Look at that. And, and what's so impressive again is the way Bobby spreads it around. All the different receivers, all the different runners. 399 yards rushing as well for Florida State today. That is a season high. 348 yards through the year. Nearly six times the offense that our visitors from Tobacco Road have been able to pull together. And there's 7.04 left on the clock. And uh -oh. as we see Wake Forest just fumble the football out of bounds at the five. Uh-oh. <laughs> we could be looking at 80 because really Bobby hasn't put the ball in the air. These are just basic dives and tosses. A few, I haven't even seen a trap or a counter. Just a quick pop up the middle, and they're going for 50 yards. Tony Labrizzi, the walk-on quarterback, a senior, a bunch of scout team performer, gets an opportunity to play with the varsity today. And what did he do? He led him on a scoring drive. Yeah. That's frightening. Now, there's nothing to say that Labrizzi and company might not score, dare we say it, 80? It, it's a possibility. and and. As you mentioned, you have to feel for this Wake Forest team. Jim Conwell is, a, is an excellent teacher, a fine football coach, but he's just really outmanned. He's outgunned. There's, there's nothing that he can do in these kind of situations. There's the celebration, and guys waving. They know what's, uh, what's at stake here. This is on the road to the national championship. Husby in trouble. Fumbles the football. It's ruled mercifully an incompleted pass as the big heat was coming. Billy Rhodes, defensive end, number 75, hit him as he released it. Another look. Well, when you have to throw from out of the end zone, it's tough. There's, you have to do it in a hurry. You just don't have the time, because if you go back too far, you're going to be out, and that's going to be a safety. So you have to drop back one, two, three. Unfortunately, you have to let it go. Lamont Green in there as well. 6.23. Away from the finish line. As Sir Chio looks things over from his five yard line. Back into his own end zone. Unloading down. Fail! And it's picked off at the 25 yard line. Florida State's Shevin Smith with the INT. He's a sophomore, by the way. Much wiser and older. A second year player. From the 20 out to the 20 in is the most dangerous place to throw the football is down the middle. Because there's so much congestion, so much confusion there. You've got to go with the quick outs if you can, if all possible. I'm not second guessing 
uh, the coaching philosophy of Wake Forest. But look at this. 20 yards down the middle. Look at all those people back there. You're talking one, two, three. It's anybody's ball. You've got to go out into the flats with the flares, the quick pops. Florida State continues its quarterback controversy. They're leaving LaBreezy in the game. <laughs> Can he make it two for two? Bowden just hammering the middle. Well, he's being kind now. <laughs> he's being very, very kind, showing a lot of respect. And when you're handing it to your fullback up the middle now, Paul, and those are just, just quick pops up the middle. That's nothing any football team should be able to, to in a uh, fundamental way, stop something quick up the middle to your fullback. That shouldn't go for 50 yards and 40 yards and 25 yards. LaBreezy again. Rolling. And taken down. Delon Parrish on the stop there. Look at that smile. Even <laughs> when rolled up by a defensive end, what the heck? Hey, I'm getting a play. Hey, because in this situation, he's not supposed to be carrying the football, so you've got a few... Uh, miscommunications for the Seminoles but hey that's that's no error with with 72 points and <laughs> he knows it he's getting into the action a little bit tailback carry down to the 24 yard line here's Brooks we've had everybody as Corey Brooks totes it there carry the ball and to be honest with you, we are scrambling to tell you who the second number 35 into the game is. We believe it's Forrest Gump Green. <laughs> honest to goodness, That'll Forrest work. Green right there, 35. There no name on no the back? No name, no name on the back. Forrest Green, ladies and gentlemen, but welcome to college football if, on if Prime. If he scores, the next week he gets the name on the back. That's how that works. Look for him to, <laughs> to run for pay dirt. The sixth-string fullback today. Give him the ball. Yes, go, Forrest, go. <laughs> to the 22-yard line. My favorite football player, Forrest Gump, no name Green. I like him. He may be a star once. One day, he may be a star, and he's going to remember this football game. Even remember the gloves the don't match. I got to like that, huh? <laughs> Everybody's a player That's today. That's all right. That's all right. Good for him. Good for him. He got into Look at the smile. Hey, give me a rub there. Wadsworth, all the number ones are over there. The scout guys are getting to play. Notice it was the defensive guys mm -hmm. who've probably been pounding on him in practice. That's right. For six months, finally come over to congratulate him. Turning it over on down. Savage, rip, rip, and just torn apart. It comes to the 25-yard line. The thing is, you know, the second, third, four-string guys play, especially the, the lower guys on the depth chart, they're ravenous when they have oh, an opportunity. Sure, sure. I mean, for them, this is uh, this is as good as it gets. They're a part of a, a team that's that's striving for the national championship. They want the ring. They want the prestige. They want the notoriety. And just to say that I played on that team that won it all in 95, if they're able to do so, that's what it's all about. The ball is toted out near the 40-yard line. Harold Battles on the stop for FSU. Three and a half minutes to go. I certainly hope that we get to see Forrest Gump Green again this you afternoon. Like him, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a pretty good linebacking core there. Mr. Coward in the middle, flanked by Mr. Rebol, along with Henry Crockett, 45. Hunting what would be their second national championship ring. And with all due respect, Forrest Green, we admire you. You're doing something, and only a few men get to do it. college men play at the Division I level. He'll get a ring as well if they win it all. That's right. It won't matter whether or not the name is on the back. He'll get the name one day. He looks like that kind of player. Wake Forest is saying, uh, does everybody get back in the huddle? Don't anyone dare call timeout <laughs> unless it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> if you're hurt, get up and crawl to the sidelines. Let's get out of here. And get back home. 
Next week, the Tar Heels of North Carolina for Wake and the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech come rambling into town here in Doak Campbell. Look out! It's in the wrong direction. Absolutely level to Juan Harrison. There's Mickey Andrews, the feisty defensive coordinator of the Florida State Seminoles. Sure. Still Look at Mickey. spitting and chewing. Yeah, Mick, Mick, to Mickey, this is like uh, the game just started. Seven to six. <laughs> You better run this tackle to That's perfection. Right. Now take a look here. You can relax if you want, thinking it's over. It isn't. It is not. And it's funny how some of these coaches will get in the meeting rooms tomorrow, and they'll be chewing you out. I mean, you've got almost 80 points, but they'll be chewing you out from some technical thing you did wrong. What was that with your footwork? Yeah, exactly. What'd you do lowering your head there? Out of the backfield. Here's Savage. And uh, he gains exactly nothing. Back to the line of scrimmage. And the clock continues to roll. A minute and a half to go. I got to say, Dave, it's been a lot of fun here this afternoon. It has afternoon. been my pleasure. I've enjoyed this immensely. You and Gene Deckerhoff are bound for the NFL tomorrow. Your Tampa yeah. Bay Buccaneers have a huge game. Four and two are the Bucks, your former club. They take on the Vikings. They are in first place in the <laughs> NFC Central. They got the, the purple and gold coming in. We need a nice crowd up there in Tampa Stadium. The guys got a, a two-game winning streak. They're on a roll. Look good. And hey. Like the beginning of something good. Yeah, LeGrand Orange uh -huh. is rolling again. Mm -hmm. A pause in the action as Bobby Bowden is headed toward his sixth win of 1995. 70 seconds away from the finish line with Florida State above 70, leading 72 to 13. We hope to visit with Coach Bobby Bowden when the day is done. Strazeri, a bobbled football. Back he goes and down he goes at the 14-yard line. Just been one of those afternoons for Wake Forest. And in fact, that was Trip Moore, the second string punter. They give him an opportunity, and it goes right through his hands. Well, and he's saying thanks, Coach. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's tough out there. It, it really is. We, we're, we're kidding in, in light manner up here, but believe me, with the wind swirling and blowing and conditions what they are it's so it's the pressure on the snapper just to get the ball back is, is, is great five touchdown passes today for the all-american Danica Dunn Forrest Green my all-american totes the football off the right side and drives it to the 10 he wins the Logan Award today hung around the longest yes he did there he is a household name on Prime, whether in Los Angeles today or up in New York. Vegas tomorrow. There's Forrest Green. There's your man. Florida State now with five or 756 yards. One more yard. They will set a mark. Most yards ever rolled up against Wake Forest. Maybe it'll be Forrest that owns a record. He could play a part. Get his name in the record book. Forrest. For that one yard, indeed. The most yards ever hung on the board against Wake Forest. And it's number 35 in your program, one of three 35s today, as a matter of fact, for Florida State, who toted the ball. Well, that ought to do it. Less than 10 seconds to go. For Forrest today, he'll remember Danny Cannell, too, with five yes, touchdown passes. I, that's, that's spectacular. Spread the wealth.